the meeting will now begin. Um, can I advise you of a few housekeeping issues as usual? Just to remind all present under the Council's remote meeting procedures, this meeting is being live streamed and recorded for archive purposes on the Council's website. Can I ask members, except for Cabinet members and group leaders, to ensure your mics and cameras are turned off unless you're invited by myself to speak? For the benefit of those joining online, could we please limit the use of the chat facility to ensure that all discussions take place in the meeting? Unless, of course, you have audio or camera issues, um, in which case, please bring that to the attention of the Democratic Services Officer as soon as possible, um, and they'll let me know at the appropriate point. If you wish to speak, please use the raise your hand function in the team software and wait until invited to speak by me. If the raise your hand function doesn't work for any reason, you can also raise your hand on camera. Uh, with regard to voting on recommendations, if there's no dissent to a recommendation, I will accept this silence as agreement. Uh, this meeting is being conducted in line with the standards set out in Section 19, Appendix 2 of the Council's Constitution. And I kindly ask that all participants adhere to one speaker at a time. Uh, the only exception will be if I need to interrupt a member for any reason. So item one on the agenda, apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies, please? Uh, Councillor Carroll? Councillor Russell Godfrey. Thank you, Councillor Burnett. Uh, Councillor Margaret Wilkinson. Thank you. Item two, a roll call and declarations of interest. Uh, can I invite the Chief Executive to take us through the roll call and any declarations, please? Uh, good evening, everybody. Councillor Anne Asprey. Personal, Adim Beed Udatgan. Councillor Julie Aviat. Uh, present, and I'd like to declare interest on four items, please. Um, item number five, the Cardiff Capital Region City Deal. Uh, it's personal but not prejudicial interest. Um, I've been nominated as the Deputy Representative for the Vale of Glamorgan. Um, items 9A and 11C, the uh, Housing Revenue Account, um, it's personal and prejudicial as I'm a council tenant. And number 9G, pay policy, as a member of my family works in the Vale of Glamorgan School. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Aviat. Uh, Councillor Gareth Ball, please. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Rhiannon Birch. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Bronwyn Brooks. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Gillian Bruce. Present, and nothing to declare. Councillor Ian Buckley. Present, and declaring an interest in agenda item 9B, personal and prejudicial. So I will leave the meeting when that comes. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Councillor Liz Burnett. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Samantha Campbell. Um, present and I'd like to declare an interest in agenda item 9B, um, personal and prejudicial. Thank you very much. Councillor George Carroll. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Christine Cave. Uh, present, nothing to declare. Councillor Charles Champion. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Janice Charles. Present, and I would like to declare 9B personal prejudicial, and I will be leaving the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Charles. Councillor Millie Collins. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Marianne Cope. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Pamela Drake. Present, and nothing to declare. Councillor Vince Driscoll. <clears throat> Present, and I'd like to claim an interest in item 9B and um, 11A. Is that correct on 11A? Um, I noticed no one else has declared on that one, but um, and it's a, a personal and prejudicial interest. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Driscoll. Uh, I'm assuming no one's declared on 11A because that's for noting, not for decision. So OK, well, I'll, I'll leave it there anyhow. But No, thank you. Um, Councillor Anthony Ernest. 
yes, I think I need to clear on 9G on the pay policy as I have a, a distant relative who is currently working for the council. Okay, thank you, Councillor Ernest. Councillor Robert Fisher. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Chris Franks. Nothing to declare. Councillor Wendy Gilligan. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Emma Goodjohn. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Ewan Goodjohn. Present, and nothing to declare. Councillor Stephen Haynes. Present, and uh, I have a personal prejudicial interest in 9B, and I will be leaving the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Councillor Howard Hamilton. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Sally Hanks. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor William Hennessy. Uh, present, and I'd like to declare on two items, please. I wish to declare a personal and prejudicial interest in items 9A and 11C in the fact that I'm a council tenant, but I'm exempt under the Code of Conduct. Thank you, Councillor Hennessy. Councillor Nick Hodges. Uh, present, nothing to declare. Councillor Mark Hooper. Sanal Adimbi, do that again. Councillor Catherine Iannucci. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Gwyn John. Oh, you're on mute, Councillor John. Sorry about that. Present, um, declaring interest in item 9F, our final budget, in the event of uh, fees and charges being discussed. I'm a life member of Lantern Major AFC. And I have a personal and prejudicial interest. However, I have dispensation to speak and vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor John. Uh, Councillor Ian Johnson. Uh, Present. I didn't do that. Can. Councillor Susan Lloyd Selby. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Belinda Lovelock Edwards. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Julie Lynch Wilson. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Kevin Marney. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Naomi Marshall C. And present, I'll have him be to that gun. Councillor Michael Morgan. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Jane Norman. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Helen Payne. Presenno, present and nothing to declare. Councillor Elliot Penn. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Sandra Perks. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Ian Perry. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Joanna Prothero. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Ruba Sivaniano. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Carrie Stallard. And present Nala Dimbid of that gun. Councillor Neil Thomas. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Rhys Thomas. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Stefan William. Present Nala Dimbid of that gun. Councillor Eddie Williams. Present, and nothing to declare. Councillor Mark Wilson. Present, and nothing to declare. Councillor Nicholas Wood. Present and nothing to declare. And I've just noticed Councillor Champion's got, you've got your hand up, Councillor Champion. Uh, yes, on 9G, I do have a member of the family who works for the council. So I okay. have an interest there. Okay, noted, thank you. Uh, that concludes the roll call, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Karen. Did you want to come in? <laughs> Yes, just to remind Councillor Aviat in relation to her agenda item declaration for nine, that obviously Councillor declared that she's got a personal and prejudicial interest, but she also has an exemption under the code to speak and stay in that and vote and remain in the meeting. Just wanted to make it make it clear. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. So we move on to uh, agenda item three to approve the minutes. Of previous meetings, we'll start with uh, 3A uh, meeting on the 5th of December 2022. 
if I could move, uh, Mayor. And I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, I see no hands, so those minutes are approved. Uh, 3B special meeting held on the 11th of January 2023. Um, and I'd like to move, Chair, uh, Mayor. And I'll second those. Thank you. Uh, those are approved. And special meeting the 30th of January 2023. And I'd like to move those as well, Mayor. And I'll second those. Thank you. And again, there's no dissent, so those minutes are approved. So moving on to agenda item four announcements. Um, since I last reported to the council in December, I've attended another 14 events, details of which could be found in the regular mayoral updates on the council's website. Um, I'd like to start by thanking all the schools and school children who submitted entries to my Christmas card competition. Uh, I recently attended Eskol Gwainanant to present the winner Lily, Lily Barnhouse with a prize and thank her for her fabulous card, which I hope uh, you all saw. Um, it beautifully illustrated the important message of a greener Christmas and a greener future. So thank you again, Lily, for that. It was a privilege to mark the annual Holocaust Memorial in January by attending an exhibition at Art Central Gallery which helped remind us that ordinary people were perpetrators, bystanders, rescuers, witnesses and victims during the Holocaust. The Council is committed to raising awareness of the Holocaust and other genocides, supporting all those who live in the midst of conflict. And with that in mind, this month the Council held a minute silence to mark a year since Russia invaded Ukraine. Thank you to all those who were able to join me for that event. It was deeply moving to meet some of the women and children who've been forced to leave their homes and to hear how grateful they are for the way people across the Vale have opened their hearts and their homes to them. And our thoughts very much remain with the people of Ukraine at this difficult time. And finally, my usual reminder that the Mayor's Foundation is open to receive applications for financial support uh, and local organisations are encouraged to apply. Uh, details can be found on the Council's website. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, Leader, do you have any announcements, please? Um, thank you, Mayor, I do. Um, colleagues, it's with great sadness I have to inform you that former councillor Anne Moore passed away in the early hours of this morning. Anne was a much respected fellow member serving the Vale of Morgan Council and its predecessor authority, as well as being a former member of Barrytown Council, where she uh, held the position of mayor. Um, Anne also held various chairmanships of committees and was known for her attention to detail, her tenacity, but above, above all, her fairness. Anne's commitment to public service for over many years saw her represent the Caddick Ward and its residents and communities. And Anne was also a great support to her husband, former councillor Neil Moore, during his time as chairman and in his roles as leader and deputy leader of the council. I would like to offer the heartfelt condolences of all members and officers of the council to Neil and Anne's family at this sad time. Mayor, could I respectfully request that we join in a minute silence as a mark of respect as we all remember Anne? Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Leader. Uh, members, please join me in a minute's silence.
Thank you, councillors. Thank you, leader. Uh, councillor Carroll. Um, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to echo the comments made by the leader. I'm deeply sorry to hear of the passing of former councillor Anne Moore. My thoughts and those of all of the Conservative group are with Neil and the rest of Anne's family at this sad time, and they are in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you, Councillor Carroll. I know they'll very much appreciate that. Uh, Councillor John. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, was absolutely hit with six today when I heard this sad news. Having worked with Anne for 23 years on the Vale Council, with her on many committees, and obviously a number of uh, uh, different functions that we met. Anne was an absolute superb councillor and represented her constituents with dignity. I, I really feel sad, and for all the family today, my heartfelt sadness goes out to Neil and all the family. Having suffered uh, the same situation 18 months ago, I can imagine how everyone feels today. And my condolences to them all. Thank you. Thank you for those really kind and personal words, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to echo the, the comments that we've heard from, from the leader, from Councillor Carroll and from Councillor John regarding um, former Councillor Anne Moore. Obviously, Anne was uh, on the council with me when I, when I first joined and many of my group um, were known her from both this council and, and Barrytown Council. And uh, our, our thoughts and our feelings are with uh, Neil and, and the rest of the family, many of whom we know through uh, through other circumstances and, and situations in Barry. So if those can um, you know, please be, be passed on to him, the family, would be great for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. We'll make sure that that happens. And I know that all of those uh, messages of condolence will be very much appreciated by Neil and the family. So, family, so, so thank you. Um, uh, Chief Executive, can I check if you have any announcements, please? And uh, nothing this evening, Mayor, thank you. Thank you. And anything from any of the cabinet members? No. Then we move on to item five on the agenda, which is a reference from the Environment and Re uh, Regeneration Scrutiny Committee from the 13th of December 2022. Uh, this item is for approval. And uh, can I um, ask the Scrutiny Chair, Councillor Perks, to take us through this, please? Thank, thank you, Mayor. So, uh, yes, as you rightly said, this is for um, seeking um, ratification from full council for a nominated um, person deputy for um, the Scrutiny Committee for Cardiff Capital Region. So um, on the 13th of December, we had a uh, people's names, councillors' names put forward. Julie Aviat was the councillor who was um, selected from the um, scrutiny committee. So I'm bringing Julie Aviat's name um, to be the nominated deputy for the scrutiny committee, committee uh, for Cardiff Capital Region if I can't attend. So I'd just like to bring that for ratification. So I'd like to move that, please, uh, uh, Mayor. And I'll second, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I see no hands, uh, and so uh, that recommendation regarding Councillor Aviat's appointment is duly approved. Thank you. Um, before I move on, uh, Councillor Bruce, I can see that you've posted a message in the chat. Uh, just to be clear, uh, you're declaring a personal and prejudice prejudicial interest in item 9G. Is that correct, please? That is and, correct, uh, yes. Thank you. Can My you clarify? apologies. I wasn't aware of it before. That's fine. Can you clarify what that uh, personal and prejudicial interest is? Please? Um, in uh, My sister works in the council. Thank you very much, Councillor Bruce. Uh, we move on to item six, report of the Chief Executive, use of the Chief Executive's emergency powers. This item is for noting. Can I invite the Executive Leader to take us through it, please, Councillor Burnett? 
Thank you, Mayor. Yes, as, as you said, this is a fairly straightforward report. This is the um, a report of the use of the Chief Executive's emergency powers since the last report on the 5th of December 2022. Um, the um, occasions when uh, they have been used are itemised under paragraph two um, and, and range from um, changes in, in group membership over to capped allowances for co-opted members. So um, they're all laid out. So I would therefore um, move the recommendation that the use of the chief executive's emergency powers be noted. And I'll second that. Thank you, councillors. I see no raised hands, and so uh, those uh, that recommendation is duly approved. And we move on to item seven, consultation with non-domestic ratepayers. Again, this item is for noting, and can I invite uh, the executive leader to take us through it, please? Thank you, Mayor. This is an annual uh, report before um, setting the council tax, and um, it's a consultation with the non-domestic ratepayers of the Vale of Glamorgan um, that um, has been on uh, out for consultation until noon today and we would normally um, if there were any um, take those representations into account. Um, I can report that as of uh, noon today there were no representations received by the council um, and therefore I would move that um, we uh, purely note this report. And I'll second that. Thank you. Um, I see no hands, so I assume there's no dissent. Uh, that recommendation is duly noted. We move on to item eight, amendments to the Council's constitution. Uh, this report is for approval. Uh, Executive Leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, another fairly straightforward report is just tidying up delegations, etc. Um, and it proposes a number of changes to the Council's constitution. First of all, amendments to officer delegation, and that just reflects the, the changes in Council's chief of, officer establishment. Changes to legislation introduce two additional delegations as set out at paragraphs 2.3 of the report mm -hmm. and Appendix A. Um, there's some clarification of the words clear days. Um, as, as referred to um, in um, paragraph two, which would, would in certain areas say at least five clear days, which includes weekends, or 10 clear days, which includes weekends, and it just clarifies the position in case it was working days or clear days. Um, and there's also amendments to the terms of reference of the Public Right of Way subcommittee um, to reflect legislative requirements and, and provide further clarity. The details of that are at Appendix 1.3. Um, so the recommendations before us are laid out on page two at the top, and um, they are that the, the change of the relevant officer delegations is set out at point one of Appendix 1 to this report okay. be approved and the Constitution be amended accordingly that the reference to clear days for publication of agendas, reports and notices within the constitution as set out in the table at point two of appendix one to this report be approved and the constitution amended accordingly. And three, that the terms of reference for the public rights of way subcommittee be amended as referred to in paragraph uh, 2.5 and point three of appendix one to this report be approved and the constitution amended accordingly and, and I would so move. And I'll second those recommendations. Thank you, I see no dissent. Uh, those recommendations are duly approved. And we move on to agenda item nine to consider proposals from the executive in relation to the council's policy framework and budget. Uh, <coughs> these reports are for approval and uh, we'll take them one by one. Um, before we do that, could I just ask uh, all councillors to ensure please that uh, their mics are switched off. Um, Councillor Franks. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just like to say, I'd like to comment on 9D, Capital Strategy. Councillor Franks, um, we haven't got. No, I'm to just 9D giving you yet. advance notice. I, I, please, I wasn't please sure don't do when that, to raise Councillor, it. Please don't do that, Councillor Franks. There's no need to do that. 
as we come to agenda items at that point councillors will be given the opportunity in the usual okay. way to speak so i don't need advance notice thank you councillor right. so uh, if you'd like to switch your camera off that would be very helpful thank you and we will move on uh, as i say to agenda item nine starting with 9a the housing revenue account business plan for 2023 to 25 uh, 53 uh, this report is for approval executive leader please thank you mayor um this report was taken to um cabinet on the 6th of march and is a reference to here it also went to um Homes and Safe Communities Scrutiny Committee on the 8th of February um, and, and they noted the report without further questions or, or comments. Um, it's, it's an interesting report and, it, and particularly encouraging to see that over the, um, the course of the, um, the plan, it is proposed that um, there will be £236 million pounds invested in housing over years um, one to 30. And, you know, that that's a good starting point, but I certainly hope that it will be, that we will be able to be more, even more ambitious than that. The the, the plan covers such areas as, as Welsh housing quality standards, ensuring that our homes stay up to good quality and that they are, um, as low energy as they can be, um, that we have a decarbonisation programme, um, that we do an awful lot more work on homelessness. The uh, requirements in terms of housing in the Vale are quite staggering, with about 1,200 homes needed a year in terms of, of um, affordable social housing. We want to look at building safety and we also want to look at um, optimised retrofit retrofit programmes, if I can pronounce that. Um, the recommendation before council, there's just the one that's come from um, Cabinet, is that the report, um, hang on, that the report be submitted to full council on 6th of March 2023 for approval um, prior to submission to Welsh Government, as it has to be into Welsh Government by the end of this month. So um, I would therefore move approval of the um, housing revenue account business. Yeah. And I'll second that, Mayor. You're on mute, Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Johnson. So, uh, just to say that in relation to agenda item 9A, there was no dissent in, rela in relation to the recommendation. So we note that that recommendation is duly approved. Moving on to 9B, council tax for unoccupied dwellings 2023 to 24. Uh, this report is for approval. Uh, executive leader, please. Thank you. Um, do we have people that need to um, leave the meeting at this point, Mayor? Do we need to give time for people to be able to leave? We do indeed. I'm assuming uh, that's happening behind the scenes, but let's give that a few minutes just to make sure that everybody understands how they're leaving and how they're rejoining the meeting. Mayor, if those members who need to leave will leave and then if they leave their laptops on we will ask them to rejoin but they have to leave the meeting if they press the red key at the top on the right hand of the screen and we how have will you how would you um ask us back to join rejoin yeah Karen? if you just if you just leave on that screen we will send you a request to join message and you just click on that message okay thank you goodbye okay can I check if everybody is clear on that? Are there any queries? If there are, please ask them now. Just waiting to ensure that the relevant members who've declared an interest are, have left the meeting. And I can see that they've gone. So um, thank you. Uh, agenda item 9B, executive leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
this, this paper in, in effect covers two decisions and that's the charging of premiums on long-term empty properties and that's over 12 months from the 2023-24 uh, year and second homes from the subsequent the following year 2024-25. The council uh, leader, leader forgive me interrupting you uh, councillor Johnson I can see you've raised your hand did you have a point of order? No, Mayor, I was looking to speak on this item. Ah, you're premature. I'm, I'm always going to assume if a councillor puts their hand up while another councillor is speaking that they have an issue that uh, requires my intervention. So apologies, Leader, for interrupting you. Thank you for the advance notice, Councillor Johnson. Leader, please continue. Thank you. Um, yes, as I just mentioned, the council published its empty home strategy in March 2020. Um, you know, we know we know only too well that finding quality rented homes is becoming increasingly difficult with ever increasing prices incentivizing landlords to sell and the ever widening gap between local housing allowance uh, rate rents and market rents. There's an underlying shortage of housing in the Vale of Glamorgan, as I, as I mentioned just earlier, of about 1200 homes per year. Um, and, and while there are obviously financial benefits to the council in introducing such premiums, um, which could in, in part contribute to greater engagement and enforcement work. The prime aim is bringing homes back into use. There are currently 528 long term empty properties and 402 second homes in the Vale of Morgan. Empty properties are not only a waste in terms of them not being available for, for accommodation, but they're a drain on the council's resources. And, um, you know, whether that be the blight that they are on many neighbourhoods or trying to, to chase up um, uh, errant owners, etc. Um, that that costs the council money. There are exemptions to the, um, the, the charges proposed, um, which means that the, the properties affected will actually be lower than 930. The council has now consulted on the proposals and received 385 responses. Um, about 56 percent were, were against introducing premiums. Um, however, just over 40 percent were in favour um, of charging a premium at, at some level. So this um, went to um, Corporate performance and resources scrutiny um, on the 14th of December. Um, there, there weren't any comments um, as such, and it was the report was noted um, on that occasion. And so the recommendations uh, before us today are that um, the council approve that the following council tax premiums be levied. That's a 100% council tax premium be levied in 2023-24 in respect of long-term empty properties, a 150% premium in 2024-25 and a 200% premium in 2025-26. Um, and a 100% council tax premium be levied in 2024-25 in respect of second homes. Um, that... Um, Council gives delegated authority to the head of finance to implement the changes and, and to notify the owners of all affected properties. Um, that council has recommended that delegated authority be given to the head of finance to determine applications for, for an exception under regulations as set out in paragraph 5.5 .5 of the report. And that um, council but it's recommended that council um, agrees that the chief executive and leader review those premiums in future years and bring changes to cabinet and council uh, for approval as appropriate. Um, and I would move. And I'll second that, uh, May, but I, I was just unsure because obviously uh, Councillor Johnson has put his hand up. So I'm not sure, Ian, whether you were looking to second. I just just want a clarification around that. 
if, if you seconded Councillor Brooks, then uh, then I'm I'm quite happy with that. That's that that's your, your prerogative. I, I just wanted to make some some, some brief comments, if I may, uh, Mayor. When, when just time. just before you do that, Councillor Johnson, just for the to the avoidance of any further confusions through the meeting, because I anticipate councillors will want to speak on a number of the issues tonight. Can I ask councillors not to raise their hand until a recommendation has been moved and seconded? And at that point, if you could raise your hand, then. Uh, that will avoid any confusion. Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Johnson, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you to Leader for, for bringing this forward. Um, councillors who've been here uh, in, in previous years will know that I've raised the issues regarding um, empty home premiums and, and second home premiums in previous years, and I'm um, pleased to be uh, supporting this. I'm glad that we're, we're bringing it forward. It is, as Leader says, a, a policy matter. Uh, rather than uh, an interest in, in raising financial money. It's a way of uh, incentivising people to make best use of those homes and bring them back into use for people uh, living in the Vale of Glamorgan. Um, I, I note the, um, the recommendation for, which is about you know, how this will be done in future years, because I'm just checking that we, because we are uh, agreeing three years or nominally three years um, worth of stepped increase in the empty home premiums starting in the new financial year, um, and um, but only one year, which is going to be the uh, the next financial year, 24-5, for the um, second home premiums. Um, if my understanding of the legislation was correct, that we require, do we require a um, a uh, an annual uh, consultation on? either or both of these premiums as we go forward, which will be part of that um, chief executive and leader reviewing the premiums in future years. Um, just could you clarify that for me, leader, please? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Marnie has his hand, hand up, um, executive leader, so I'll take Councillor Marnie's uh, comments first, if I may. Um, yes, I just like to say um, I, I'm sure all of us share um, concerns about, shall we say, I think it was already mentioned earlier, the sort of derelict homes that uh, seemingly abandoned homes that blight streets and cause terrible problems for neighbours and stuff. There's the uh, second home issue, isn't there, which uh, has decimated very many villages and holiday spots, which is a, a kind of separate thing, I would say, a separate area. But um, I do feel there's a, a certain degree of... Uh, infringement of civil liberties on this. I don't own two houses myself, but um, I have in the past, not because I was rich, by the way, because I was doing one up to move into, into my current home, actually. Um, that didn't actually exceed a year um, before I finished those improvements and then was then able to transfer. But it, it could have done, I suppose. I mean, who would they look more? If I was in the economic position that uh, I own two houses, which I, I stress yet again, I'm not. Um, if I wish to live somewhere, you know, six months here, six months there, who, who are the Vale of Glamorgan to be lecturing me, quite frankly? Um, so there is a certain degree of, uh, of uh, concern of mine on this, although I, I, I am, uh, oh, and I should point out again, you mentioned yet another Vale of Glamorgan consultation and which the majority of respondents were against the plan, but yet the Vale of Glamorgan, of course, yet again, plough on with it in the face of public opinion of those who respond in. Um, this seems to happen on just about every consultation, and you still don't get it, um, you know, flying in the face of, of, of public consultation. So I do have concerns over this, although I do acknowledge, as I've already mentioned, the, um, you know, abandonment of homes and, and perhaps sometimes the decimation of um, houses in a particular holiday area or villages and population um, for bite uh, uh, holiday lets and all this sort of, of thing. But I do, I do at the heart of it wonder who do you think you are dictating to people <laughs> whether they live in their house a month, a year, a month, two years, two six months, every two years. You know, again, who do you think you are on this? So I've, I do have huge reservations over this. To be honest with, you. that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. I see uh, no further hands. So, Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if I could just come back on those. Um, I think that, that the uh, recommendation for was, was purely that, you know, should we um, review the charges and 
want to bring back or to to change premiums anyway it was it was more reassurance that that would be brought back to cabinet and council for decision um i i think that we have to see how it goes and we'll also be sort of benchmarking and comparing um with other councils as well um to see how it how it works um and um, just thank Councillor Marnie for his comments as ever. Um, I have no problems with people owning two houses. I have no problems with people owning three houses or more. But if they're not in productive use, because if you look at the exemptions, if those houses are being let out or if those houses are being used for other areas, if, if they're in productive use, they, they, there would be an exemption. But if they're not in productive use, then they should be prepared to, to make an additional contribution for that. And, you know, we, we set the strategy um, a, a couple of years ago and um, I fully support it. And I, I hope that um, that council will too. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Um, I can see no further hands in relation to this item uh, and therefore those recommendations are duly approved. And we move on to Agenda item 9C, the draft uh, Vailable Morgan Council annual delivery plan for 2023 to 24. Just to clarify, there are two recommendations in this report, but at this point we'll deal with recommendation three, which is for approval. Um, and I'll take recommendation four when we come to agenda item 11H, as it involves use of emergency decision procedure. Yes. Uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Burnett. Would you like to wait a couple of seconds so we can actually call the um, members who have declared? I do apologise. I didn't realise they went back with us. Mayor, all are back now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back, councillors. Um, I was a little premature in uh, my introduction to this agenda item. So uh, for clarification, we're now looking at agenda item 9C, which is the draft A. Local Morgan annual delivery plan for 2023 to 24. And I was explaining that there are two recommendations in the report, but at this point we'll deal with recommendation three, which is for approval. Um, and we'll take recommendation four when we come to agenda item 11H as it involves use of the emergency decision procedure. Um, executive leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this was a reference from um, Cabinet on the 16th of February. It's the draft Bev Morgan Council Annual Delivery Plan. And I think members would be aware that this is been to went to cabinet previously in its in its initial draft form it went right the way around all the different scrutinies came back to cabinet um on the 16th of february the day before that it had actually gone to corporate performance and resources um scrutiny committee um, there were no recommendations from that and it was it was noted so um there were an Appendix B includes um, the uh, consultation responses and the actions that were taken as a result of that informing this this new draft. And, and when it came to Cabinet, I also did suggest that, that as we move forward in future, um, that I would like to see more dialogue, more engagement in on the online um, responses as as well, and we'll be looking to do that. Um, as as members would be aware, this this um, plan has has sort of four overarching um, objectives, but it also overlying that has the the, the three um, additional challenges. So you've got the four four objectives, which is to work with and for our communities, to support learning, employment and economic growth, to support people at home and in their communities, and to respect, enhance and enjoy our environment. Cross-cutting themes with that is the cost of living, which is, you know, as we move into delivering this year of our um, corporate plan in, in this year's annual delivery plan, we have the cost of living, 
we have Project Zero, and also we have organisational resilience, because making sure that we have the right staff, um, of the right expertise and the right places is, is a major challenge that, that we also face on that. Um, in terms of, of Cabinet agreed four recommendations, the third one is for us, um, and they, um, Cabinet, agreed that the annual delivery plan, um, uh, Appendix A, be endorsed and the report and appendices referred to Council on the 6th of March 2023, so that's today, for consideration and approval. Um, and on that note, I would therefore move approval. And I'll second that, Mayor. Thank you, councillors. I see no hands, therefore I assume there is no dissent and that recommendation is duly approved. We move on to agenda item 9D, Capital Strategy 2023-24 and the final capital programme proposals for 2023-24 to 2027-28. Uh, this report is for approval. Um, executive Leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is another reference from Cabinet uh, from the 27th of February. Um, and as, as, as with previous reports, this has been um, around scrutinies for, for additional comment as well. Um, this relates to the Council's capital strategy for 2023-24, um, and that's Appendix 1, and the final capital programme proposals um, for the period 2023-24 right through to 2027-28, um, and that's at Appendix 2. It's a longer term view of the Council's capital investment requirements, but you know, it, it is difficult to predict what capital resources will be required um, over a long period because we we receive funding on, a, on an annual, a year by year um, basis when we're trying to plan for five years. Um, there are changing priorities and capital receipts are also unpredictable. So if we're looking to to fund um, our capital programme by capital receipts and we don't know what we're going to be receiving, then that can be difficult. A summary of the five year capital programme and how it's funded um, is given in the report and a total value of capital schemes over the next five years is anticipated to be 345 million. That includes 41 million for band B of sustainable communities for learning programme, um, excluding the pipeline schemes, which I'll mention later, and 167 for the housing improvement programme. Obviously, this gets updated regularly and it also will get updated annually as well. The funding table also highlights the borrowing re required to implement the programme, um, which is 127 million, of which 88 million is relation to the housing improvement programme. When we when we brought the draft capital programme proposals to cabinet in January, seven amendments have been several amendments have been made to the five year capital programme, um, and I outlined those when when we took it to um, cabinet on the twenty seventh um, of February. But I think, as I mentioned earlier, um, it's worth commenting on the two sustainable communities for learning pipeline schemes, which have been approved in uh, included in Appendix Two. And that's in relation to St. Richard Gwyn um, redevelopment, and that's £62 million, pounds, which would be in the pipeline for that. Um, and I was only thinking, actually, I, I spotted that um, that the Escoladeri Special School um, um, documentary was on is, is on to um, nationwide TV shortly. Um, in fact, I think it might even be tonight. And I was thinking back to the fact that in um, when Penarth Learning Community was built, it was 50 million for the whole lot. And in terms of what we're now coping with with inflation, this this St. Richard Gwynn development is at the, is currently estimated at 62 million. Um, and then the second scheme is the extension to Cowbridge Primary Phase Two, and that's 13.7 million. Um, but that is also includes um, provision for adult Welsh medium adult education, and also an immersion unit. Um, for children who who want to move into um, 
Welsh language sector. So those will be subject to full business case approval and to further cabinet reports. Um, and the, the, the schemes are detailed further in the school investment section of this report. So cabinet um, agreed the recommendations of this report. And um, what is before us today, um, that Cabinet recommend to Council that the Capital Strategy 2023-24 as set out in Appendix 1 to report be approved. Two, that Cabinet recommend to Council that the final capital programme for the years 2023-24 to 2027-28 as set out in Appendix 2 to report be approved. Um, three, that Cabinet recommend to Council that the Chief Executive and the Head of Finance in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Performance and Resources are given delegated authority to make additions, deletions or transfers to or from the 2023-24 to 2027-28 Housing Improvement Programme as appropriate. Um, that Cabinet recommend to Council that the Chief Executive and the Head of Finance in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Performance and Resources are given delegated authority to make additions, deletions or transfers to or from the 2023-24 to 2027-28 asset renewal budgets as appropriate. The Cabinet recommend to Council that the Chief Executive and Head of Finance in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Performance and Resources, are given delegated authority to make additions, deletions or transfers to Section 106 funded schemes subject to member consultation as required under the existing process. Um, the Cabinet recommend to Council the Chief Executive and the Head of Finance in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Performance and Resources are given delegated authority to make additions, deletions or transfers to or from energy management schemes. The Cabinet, seven, that Cabinet recommend to Council that the Chief Executive and the Head of Finance in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Performance and Resources are given delegated authority to make additions, deletions or transfers to or from the Building Strong Communities Fund schemes. And finally, um, eight, that Cabinet recommend to Council that the Chief Executive and the Head of Finance, in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Performance and Resources, are given delegated authority to make additions, deletions or transfers to or from the Sustainable Communities for Learning Band B programme, uh, which was previously 21st Century Schools schemes. Um, and I'd move. And I'll second those recommendations, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Franks. Thank you. Um, I think it is worth Council considering that in the financial year 21-22, there was an uh, £11.5 million slippage. And in the current year, there's a minimum of £8 million. So I regret to say there's not really a very good track record to base the forthcoming capital uh, budget. And in fact, of 88.2 million pound budget for this year. By the end of January, only 42.7 million has been spent. So that uh, uh, 8 million pound of uh, slippage is uh, potentially going to grow. Now, often uh, it is the most vulnerable people that need council services. And uh, I think these figures show that they're being badly let down by Labour and their independent friends. Uh, in fact, the cabinet looks like a friends conve convention full of mutual backslapping and praise. One key area is the failure to invest available funds uh, relating to social housing. To, f to fail to spend millions on new homes is a shocking disgrace. We've already heard tonight of the, the great demand uh, we are not helping meet that great demand for social housing. Uh, to, to fail to spend millions on new homes is a shocking disgrace. Uh, I recently challenged a statement that work had been continuing at Hayeswood Road housing site. Uh, promises were made that the matter would be investigated, yet not a word had has been received to date whether the uh, 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 work on the site has recommenced. 
The current housing budget is 3.2 underspent, including almost a million on individual schemes, uh, 909,000 on energy efficient uh, schemes, and 620 pounds on environmental improvements. The cabinet's inability to apply available resources to improve school buildings is an indictment on your priorities. We know that new schools have been built. However, this was with Welsh Government cash and under its wash, watchful eye. If we didn't come up to scratch there, there would be serious trouble. And when it comes to maintenance of sc school after school has been let down and often in the most economically deprived areas. Turning to the car park uh, in uh, spend, um, ANPR, uh, uh, the ANPR scheme, it's interesting to see a million pounds uh, slippage. Can the cabinet member indicate how effective and efficient this scheme will be? Likewise, can you indicate why the Barry Way project funding is so much behind schedule? I can't believe that given the dreadful state of our roads and pavements, you are not allocating additional capital to improve matters. Even major routes such as the Dock Link Road are rapidly deteriorating, let alone residential streets. You neglect pavements despite your claim policy of encouraging people to get out of their cars. You allow play areas to decline to such an estate, a state that equipment becomes so poor that it has to be removed. Your capital budget is simply not credible. You are but failing Councillor our Franks, communities. Uh, forgive and Councillor you, Franks. You, Councillor you, you Franks. Are, you Councillor are simply Franks. clinging to power. Councillor yes. Franks, I'm speaking, just to say you have one more Well, minute, I was please. speaking as well, Mayor. Councillor You're, Franks. Yeah, under well, the I rules, Councillor well. Franks, under the rule of the Constitution, members may speak for no more than five minutes. I'm being polite in giving you a one minute warning. Can you please draw your comments to an end? Uh, uh, I can see that the monitoring officer wants to step in at this point. Thank you. Um, just to remind Councillor Franks, when the mayor speaks, um, members who are speaking are to full silent. So just remember remind you of that uh, procedure rule. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, monitoring uh, officer. And thank you, uh, Ma Councillor Franks, Councillor Franks, as I'm trying to say to you, uh, you have one minute left. Can I ask you to uh, draw your comments to a close? Thank you. Uh, thank you. You'll be delighted to hear. Had you waited for three more seconds, I would have finished. So I'll repeat my last sentence. Your capital budget is simply not credible. You are failing our communities, but you simply are clinging to power. I see no further uh, hands raised. Therefore, I assume there are no further comments in relation to this matter. Um, executive leader, do you want to respond to the comments that have been made? If not, we'll move on. Um, I don't think on this occasion, no, I don't think there's, there's a lot of point. Thank you. Thank you very much. In which case, uh, those recommendations are duly approved. And we move on to agenda item 9E, Treasury Management and Investment Strategy 2023-24, and the update from 2022 to 23. Uh, this report is for approval. Executive leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. And um, for those that attended the Treasury management training the other evening and then um, watched governance and audit um, help to, to, I think, clarify an awful lot of stuff to do with the the, the treasury management and, and investment strategy. Um, and, and so basically the, the main purpose of this report is to um, report on borrowing and investments um, and also approve treasury management investment strategies set out in Appendix 1. Um, so all activities uh, that the council is currently undertaking were in accordance with the council's approved strategy on treasury, treasury management. Um, details of monies borrowed and repaid and those invested um, are also outlined in the report. 
the proposed 2023-24 Treasury Management Investment Strategy, and that's in Appendix 1, uh, is Appendix 1. The Council must ensure that the Prudential Code is com complied with, um, which has been developed by SIPFA as a professional code of practice um, and was recently revised in December 2021. The to demonstrate um, the council has, has fulfilled these objectives, the code sets out prudential indicators that should be used and the factors that must be considered. And these are detailed as part of the strategy. So in essence, going through the report, Appendix 1 covers the Treasury Management Investment Strategy, and that's all sorts of things like reporting requirements, statutory prudential and, and Treasury indicators, Treasury Management Training, um, economic background, prospects for interest rates, balance sheet projections, uh, borrowing the minimum, re minimum revenue provision um, and investing. Appendix 2 goes through the Treasury Management Policy Statement um, and, and you know, that detailed the fact that the Treasury Management of the Council is conducted within the framework of the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy, that's a SIP phone, in other words, Treasury Management in the Public Services Code of Practice 2021. Um, and the, the main council policies covered by this report are detailed in the appendix. And in appendix three is the Treasury management um, practices. And, and they've been compiled in line with, again, with the, the Treasury Management and Public Services Code of Practice and cross-sectional guidance notes. Um, they've been written in conjunction with the Council's Treasury Management Policy Statement and Investment Strategy for 2023-24. Um, and that the Treasury Management Practices sets out the way this Council will seek to achieve its Treasury Management um, policies. Um, hang on, just missed that bit. And, and objectives and how it will manage and control those activities. There are 12 practices that the Council are required to address, and, and these are also detailed within the appendix. Um, as I said, it, it, it went to Cabinet. It's also been to um, the Governance and Audit Committee. Let me just check in that I haven't missed anything else on the thing. No. So the recommendations before us um, today is that um, Cabinet recommended to Council to approve the policy for making minimum revenue provision in 2023-24, that Cabinet recommended to Council to approve the proposed 2023-24 Treasury Management Investment Strategy, um, including the following specific resolution detailed in Appendix 1, and that's that the authorised limit for external debt be set at 225.439 million for 2022-23, 247.141 million for 2023-24, 276.773 million for 2024-25, and 305.927 million for 2025-26. The operational boundary for external debt be set at 212.292 million for 2022-23. Um, 234.021 um, million for 2023-24, 263.349 million for 2024-25, and 292.295 million for 2025-26. Um, that Section 106 officer be given delegated authority within the total authorised limit and operational boundary as estimated for individual years to affect movement between the separately agreed limits for borrowing and other, other long term liabilities. Um, that an upper limit of 10 million um, for 200 uh, for 2022 23, 10 million for 2023 24, and 10 million in 2024 25, and 10 million in 2025 26 is set for total principal sums invested for over 364 days. Um, the amount of projected borrowing that is fixed rate maturing in each period as a percentage of total projected borrowing that is fixed for 2023-24 be set as, and there's a table just below that in the recommendations. Uh, Leader, um, forgive me interrupting you at, at this stage. I can see that the monitoring officer wants to make a comment. So if I can bring... I've only uh, got two more bullets, so... Devian at this point, thank you. 
Oh, if I just go back, um, a leader, I think inadvertently you said section 106 officer rather than section 151 oh, officer. So it's just to, to raise Thank that you. before you move the, um, the, the, the motion. Thank you. As I say, I haven't spotted Councillor Johnson's hand up. He'd normally have spotted that one for me. But um, yes, thank you. So just two more bullet points that the prudential indicators set out in Appendix 1 be approved. And finally, that the Treasury Management Policy Statement set out in Appendix 2 um, be approved. Um, and, and I would move. And I'll second those recommendations, Lee, uh, Mayor. Thank you. Councillors, uh, Councillor Champion, please. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, Leader, for that report. Um, in our Welsh Church Act committee, we've asked them to look at investing sort of in green funds. And I just wonder whether the Leader could talk to the officers about in future, perhaps trying to focus the funds that we invest in. We're not investing in oil companies and uh, the such like. I know we might not get the best buck, but uh, we need to be shown to be going to this <laughs> economic, you know, all right. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Johnson, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you very much to um, the leader. Um, I'd like to just echo some of the comments about the uh, the importance and the interesting uh, training on Treasury management that uh, that we had last week. It was uh, as a poor member of the Governance and Audit Committee, it is something that maybe is not um, the easiest thing to get your head around, but it is uh, very important. Um, and I think it's quite nice that for perhaps the first time since uh, I've been on this council, we've actually um, seeing some investment income uh, returning in because traditionally the amount of interest raised uh, has been very limited. Uh, I'm sure the leader will, will come back and answer Councillor Champion's question, but much of our income, as was explained in the training session, which I, I don't think any Conservative actually attended, much of the uh, the income that we have is, uh, it's about our, uh, our risk appetite and therefore our money is generally lent to those, um, to other organisations similar to ourselves, which have very high ratings, uh, high credit ratings, and which are not at risk of, of going bankrupt and therefore losing that money because fundamentally we are uh, holding our taxpayers' money um, where we can get the best income. And I think this year we're seeing, uh, according to our most recent revenue forecast, say around three quarters of a million pounds um, of investment income, where previously we've um, barely had a decimal point on that. Uh, and that's been estimated, I think, at £775,000 for next year. So uh, I'm glad to see um, you know, that at least something of that is coming. But the most fundamental part of our Treasury management is that our uh, our, ta our our residents' money uh, is held safely and in a liquid form that we can use when we require it um, for use for our projects, such as those things that we've uh, just talked about in the capital strategy. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I see no other hands. So, uh, Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in, in relation to Councillor Champion, um, it is it is a conversation that needs to be had, but I think that if we balance that off against some of the comments that, that Councillor Johnson made as well, this this is the money of um, the people of the Vale of Morgan, and in one way we need to ensure that that we achieve it returns on investment, but also we have to try and be we have to be as ethical as we can in our investment strategy. Um, so this this is a conversation that will be ongoing. I'm glad to see that we are getting return on investment, but I, I would I would want to to set out as as ethical an investment strategy as possible. Um, I think that one thing that we will see as well is that the the council has now um, a growth and investment fund, which we can look to to for use in terms of economic development within the Vale of Glamorgan, and and I hope that we will see that move forward. In, in the future um, as well. So I think lots of conversations. I, I think that it, it was quite interesting that in the um, other um, report that I brought to Cabinet last week in terms of financial management code, and that, that actually spelled out that there is collective responsibility not purely just for officers we can't just pass it off on the, the section 1501 officer but actually for every elected member 
that every elected member should have responsibility for what the council does with its finances. And so, um, you know, hopefully we'll have a lot more training like we did with, with um, the, the, the Treasury management session the other day so that, that more and more councillors can get elected. I mean, I, I heard a comment in a screen the other day about, oh, well, that's finance. That's very difficult. We won't bother with that. Um, that 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 hopefully won't won't continue in this council and elected members will become um, more and more engaged in exactly where the money is, exactly what we're doing with it and exactly how by our strategies and policies we will benefit um, local people. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Uh, those recommendations are duly noted as approved. And we move on to agenda item 9F, the final budget 2023-24 and medium term financial plan 2023-24 to 2028-29. This report is for approval. Uh, Executive Leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. I think the thing, simple thing that we've got to say here is that the, this council is legally required to agree a balanced budget. We cannot have an overdraft. We cannot return a deficit budget as some public sector organisations are allowed to. And so the question for us tonight is how we provide the services and support the residents. That the, and support the, the residents of the Vale of Morgan. You know, the services that we provide are depended upon by so many. So the other question is, how do we set a reasonable increase in council tax, given the cost of living crisis, the need to protect services for the most vulnerable in the county, to ensure a sustainable level of funding for our schools, identify a package of savings, because we do need to make savings, and make a measured use of reserves on a one-off basis. It's been a it's been a particularly difficult budget round, and I think members will agree that we've been we've been discussing the budget in all its iterations since October. And every time that we've discussed it, the figures have changed because we either inflation's either gone up, or we maybe get some more money in, or there are other issues to discuss. There's been a huge amount of uncertainty in a very challenging economic environment. And it does make for very difficult financial planning, especially when I look back at last autumn and, and trying to set a financial strategy during the chaos. And I think that's the only word you can use, the chaos caused by the mini fiscal event. And we were facing a £28 million funding gap at that point. As reported back in January, the provisional settlement that we were notified of in December was, was far, far better than expected. But it still left a sizable gap and it's been necessary to manage a number of priorities to bring forward a balanced budget. We always said that our strategy would be that we would protect our most vulnerable, we would protect social services, we would protect education. But as any elected member with, with you know, even scant experience would understand, if you protect services that take 75% of your budget, then there are other services that come under huge pressure. Notional, notional funding for social care and schools were uplifted by 5.1% and 7% respectively by Welsh Government. And the Council in, in the appendices before you uh, is being totally transparent with the le level of pressures faced in re these services. For social care, there is an additional £8 million in the budget, which is significantly over the Welsh Government uplift, which ensures that Council can commission the necessary domiciliary care and meet the needs of the residential care sector that's experiencing similar inflationary pressures to us. 
For schools, there's an extra 10.4 million, a rise in excess of 9%. And that recognises all of the inflationary costs being faced, but it does accept that there will need to be some efficiencies because we've had to share the burden across the council. Available Morgan's council tax level is below the average for Wales. And a 4.9% increase will see that position maintained or actually probably improved. Some Welsh authorities setting increases two or three points higher. In fact, some five points higher. There have been difficult choices to be made in identifying the savings package of 4.6 million, but we're taking the right actions. Fees and charges have to go up. There are non-statutory services where the choice is do it or don't do it. They're mainly in, in, in line with inflation, but it's essential that we cover our costs. And in terms of the changes to, to um, waste collections, I'm actually pleased with the positive impacts they will have on the environment. We hear an awful lot over the years about oh, the reserves, use the reserves, etc. And this outlines that reserves are already gone down by the end of March this year because of the inflation, etc. that we've, we've, we've suffered this year. But during this year, there's been a fundamental review of reserves too, which puts the council um, to, to look at, at future risks um, and in, invest more in efficient services in the future. So we might use some reserves to, to smooth out pressures. We might use other reserves um, to, to cover to, to, for investment. But it's worth looking at the fact that the investment pressures that we first looked at in October, the things that we would really like to do as a council, the things that we would want to deliver for, for our local residents, actually we've had to cut back to just over a million. So for this year, there won't be a huge amount of investment in, in services. There are Detailed appendices, and so in Appendix A, you get you've got the full details of the budget. Appendix B is the revised cost pressures, so that's the cost pressures that have um, come down from from um, 38 million down to about 31 million. Um, Appendix C is cost savings and income generation, so how we're going to to try and meet some of those additional costs. Appendix D is reserves. And coupled with that, there's the uh, Appendix E is from is the Head of Finance Stroke Section 151 Officer's appraisal of the robustness of the estimates and the sufficiency of reserves. And I think that's worth reading as well in terms of what the reserves are, what they're projected to be and what they're being used for. Appendix F was the budget consultation. And this year there was an increase, still not enough, but it was 773 responses um, and appendix G is is the um, equality um, impact assessment. It's been a very robust and thorough budget setting process this year and I thank those members that have engaged in that um, and I think that the the report that's come out has been a testimony to the uh, current management of the council's finance. Um, there are Two reserves for us and uh, re recommendations for us. And firstly, that council approve a council tax increase of 4.9% and that council approve the budget for 2023-24. Um, and I would move. And I'll second those recommendations, Mayor, uh, and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Councillor Carroll, please. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, setting the budget is the single most important decision that this authority takes each year. We are deciding how to spend almost £300 million of public money, how services will be provided and how much council tax residents pay. It is therefore frankly outrageous, Madam Mayor, that this meeting is being held remotely. We should be meeting in person discussing this in the council chamber. We need to have proper interaction and debate of a kind that is not possible behind a computer screen. 
It is a failure of leadership on the part of this administration that we are unable to do so. Most other councils, Madam Mayor in Wales, are meeting in person, and it's unacceptable that proper facilities have not been put in place to allow this to happen tonight. And failures in leadership, Madam Mayor, are not restricted to this. When we look at the budget before us this evening, we see countless other examples. Failures in leadership to deliver services efficiently and provide value for money for council taxpayers. It's not acceptable that this administration is proposing to increase council tax by 4.9% and at the same time cut services. Black bag collections are moving to a three weekly cycle. Charges will soon be introduced for the garden waste collection service. And there are countless other examples of fees and charges going up, in some cases by as much as 400%. This administration, Madam Mayor, is taking with one hand and taking with the other. And it's all the more galling, Madam Mayor, when we look at the amounts that the authority is holding in reserves. If we take the general reserves, the council fund, there's around £11 million sat in that fund. It's cash sat in the bank being hoarded that really belongs to council taxpayers. The authority obviously needs reserves, Madam Mayor, no one is disputing that, but it's the levels at which we hold them which is of concern. Let's look at other neighbouring authorities, Labour ones at that. Cardiff has a revenue budget, Madam Mayor, two and a half times larger than ours, yet they hold £14.3 million in general reserves. Ron the Cunham Taff, another Labour authority, has £7.5 million in their general reserves, and again, their revenue budget is bigger. So when we look at things in this context, Madam Mayor, it's clear the council tax rise proposed is not necessary. Freezing council tax for this year, Madam Mayor, would cost the authority £4.239 million. With £11 million in the bank, we have the money to do it. These are extraordinarily difficult times. We've just had a global pandemic and we've had Putin's war in Ukraine. And the inflationary pressures that household budgets are facing are considerable. The authority often talks about our reserves as being a rainy day fund. Well, it's raining and now is the time to use them. I therefore propose an amendment to the revenue budget, Madam Mayor, to take £4.239 million out of general reserves and use them to support the base budget. This would enable us to freeze council tax for the year, which is the right thing to do, and I so move. Councillor Charles. I second that amendment and reserve the right to speak later. Uh, thank you. Um, before um, we clarify that amendment, I can see that the monitoring officer has her hand raised. So um, if I can bring you in at this point, please. Uh, Debbie, if you'd like to. I'm muted. This point. Yes. Sorry. Thank you very much. Um, can I also um, just mention about the supplemental um, report um, and supplemental papers um, that accompanied the, the agenda? Um, so for, for completeness, um, for that to be um, moved so that that's available for discussion. Thank you. So before we take the amendment, just to clarify uh, with Councillor um, Burnett that you're also moving that supplementary report. Can you just confirm that? I am indeed, Mayor. Thank you. And Councillor Brooks, can you just confirm that you're seconding that? Yes, I can, Mayor. Thank you. And thank you, Monitoring Officer, for that helpful clarification. So the amendment we have before us, which is now open for discussion and debate, um, I just want to make sure that I've understood this, but the proposal is that this council should take 4.23 million out of its reserves and freeze council tax for 23-24. Councillor Carroll, can you just confirm that's the amendment? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Johnson, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. I'll be uh, responding to the um, Conservative amendment that just been put forward, and then um, uh, depending on how that goes, I'll be considering uh, later amendments as well. Um, I think, Madam Mayor, Mayor, 
it, it's probably fair to say that nobody takes the Conservatives particularly seriously on financial issues. And putting forward um, uh, an amendment which is costed only in the sense of there is some money there, but I don't tell you what will happen in future isn't particularly um, sensible or grown up way of, of going forward with this discussion. There's a lot of things that we can talk about here, but this is almost, you know, sort of um, this is this is grandstanding without um, there having much ground grounds to stand on. Um, the problem with Conservatives is we, we had a fiscal event which crashed the economy last autumn. But beyond that, we've also had the slow strangulation of public services that have taken place in the last decade. I've, I've been a councillor here um, for 11 years. And in that time, we've had a hollowing out of public services through underfunding as part of austerity. We've had the uncertainty and an economic disaster of Brexit. Uh, and that's all fed into the current cost of living crisis. While the Conservatives have been in power at Westminster, Labour are also responsible, in my opinion. I've spent two thirds of my life with a Tory government that Wales didn't elect, and Labour props that up by wedding themselves to a constitutional system of unionism that puts the Tories in charge more often than not. It makes no sense to me, and um, presumably it does to the people in the Labour Party, but it makes no sense to me that they'd rather a Tory government um, than a Labour government in Wales, which would actually be able to take responsibility and do these things properly. The impact of the dented shield that we, we see in our budgets um, the impact of that approach is underfunding substandard services for ordinary people. The way of dealing with it in Wales is to transfer the cost of local services from central government to taxpayers. That's why we've seen above inflation council tax increases for almost the past decade, and we're paying more for fewer services. At first glance, um, and we've seen it from both speakers already, the, this year's proposed council tax increase is not so bad. It's lower than inflation um, and in the middle across Wales, but most households will get less of a service next year than last. If we add in the full final £36 cost of the garden tax, that becomes a 7.5% increase for bandy households. This is a question of accountability. Labour had a good election last year. For many councillors, this is your first budget. Which of you said you'd support a council tax increase of nearly 5%? Who told electors they'd raise council house rents by an average of £300? Who put in their leaflets we'd moved to a three-week back, black, uh, three weekly black bank collection? Who said they'd make residents pay for extra services that weren't in their council tax? I'm pretty sure none of you did. It's a difficult budget. There are good cho there are choices that can be made, and we'll look at making some of those later. However, in response to this amendment from the Conservatives, I'm afraid that I can't support something that is simply um, unfunded and unexplained. It's one thing to say we'll take money from reserves, but at some point you have to work out where that money is coming from, how is it going to be done next year and the year after, or you're going to be looking at double-digit increases. So on this occasion, Councillor Carroll, I can't be agreeing with you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor John, please, you want to comment on the amendment? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I, I quite honestly think that uh, the Conservatives must have been asleep since last autumn with, with the mess that we've seen in the country and the state that we've actually got through. I've been on this council 24 years and I've never seen a situation like we were in that we were left with this huge problem. And as to the expertise of our finance department, particularly Matt and Gemma, who have done a tremendous job, the chief executive and the strategic management team have really brought this down to what it is tonight. Otherwise, we would, quite simply, have been facing a Conway increase of 9.9. .9. We are currently 15th out of the Welsh 22 authorities. We share that 15th place with Bridgen on 4.9. But quite honestly, I cannot believe that you can walk around in the dark and not see what's happened around you. Everybody has been made aware of the situation over and over over the last six months. And still we come back here tonight, and quite honestly, I think this uh, amendment, quite honestly, is, is disrespectful to the management team who have brought this budget together with the members on the Cabinet. It's been a worrying time, and we have finally come up with a 4.9. Yes, nobody likes to pay uh, uh, council tax, nobody does, but until a solution is sought by the government, then we have still got to go down the same road to balance our budgets. And quite honestly, as far as I'm concerned, 
We are supporting, Landwick First is supporting the budget tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Stephen Haynes, please. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, I would say thank you for the comments previously from the people who've obviously not noticed how the veil has deteriorated in the years I've certainly lived here. Uh, anyway, this Labour group have managed to hit the residents of the veil twice with this budget. They've cut services while increasing the council tax, which is it's a neat job, that is. It really is. We have excessive reserves greater than the similar, similar authorities within Wales. And this is completely unnecessary to have these reserves. We can simply reduce the reserves protect and protect the residents of the Vale. And it's not the, uh, the administration or the officers that we need to look after. It is the residents of the Vale who we elected by and those are the people we need to res respect and help particularly the worst off. One other point, if you, if you don't mind me saying, that uh, much was made about the incre increase of a week of a bag surface, or how good it'd be for the environment. Tell that to the people who are incontinent. We're going to have to store human waste for an extra week. I'm sure it'd be good for their environment. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mark Wilson, please. Thank you very much. Um... I, I'm really concerned about the proposition from Councillor Cowell here and and the Conservative group, because if you look at our reserves, we have lots of different types of reserves, don't we? We have earmarked reserves and we have unearmarked the float. And what you're talking about is £11 million. Now, really, £11 million for a budget is really quite a prudent approach, actually. We're not talking about huge amounts of money being used um, as a general reserve. And as you know, we've had lots and lots of crises in the last couple of years. We've had COVID, we've had the Ukraine war, and of course, we've still got the continual crisis of Brexit. All that has caused inflationary consequences for us. Um, and remember, we are facing that with inflationary consequences and not forgetting, of course, climate change as well. And therefore, we need to be very prudent about the use of our money. And yes, I would love to raid reserves and, and finance the budget. Of course I would. But but really, I think, you know, you need to go on a learning curve. No disrespect to you, Councillor Cowell, really. But I've been a member for a long time. And I can appreciate that I had one. I had thought, like you, way back in 2004, let's take the money from reserves. And I was told by one of your previous leaders, who's no longer a, uh, a member of the council, he said, we well, can only use reserves only once. Um, Councillor Wilson, he, and he said in a rather respectful way to me, and I said, you know what, he's been absolutely right. You can only spend it once. And if you keep raising the reserves, you have nothing at all. I also seem to remember, Councillor Cowley, that you raised a similar point, I think, last year, maybe the year before that, as, as a member. And clearly, you know, there are real concerns here that if you keep saying we're going to finance the budget by using our reserves, then what reserves we have? And we have none. And another point I'd like to also make, of course, is that the one end of the country, and I'm talking about the UK here, we've now got a cumulative debt of around £2.4 trillion. Now, this has gone up almost by £1.3 trillion since 2010. And that, to me, it shows you, you know, that the Conservatives are not to be trusted with our finances of this country. They're certainly not at all. Aye. And really, Jokers. this is the point I like to make. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor Rhys Thomas, please. Thank you very much, Chair. This council is giving residents a double whammy of a council tax hike and cuts to much needed services. Bin collections are being cut and charges for garden waste collections are being introduced, among a litany of other fee increases. As Councillor Carroll has outlined, this comes at the same time that the Vale of the Morgan Council has over 11 million in general reserves. This is not an insignificant amount of money and proportionally more significant than other councils like in Cardiff. I acknowledge the leader saying that the council will look at using reserves in future, but there are millions of reserves there now that could and should be put to much better use by bolstering services and keeping other charges as low as possible. 
We want to see that money, which is just sitting there in the council bank account, used to support residents that desperately need help, not holding back those reserves and slapping residents with a punishing council tax increase. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Ewan Goodjohn, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If I may speak on the amendment first and speak more generally on the budget later. Um, Councillor Johnson stated that no one really uh, fully uh, takes the Conservative seriously on finances. And uh, generally, I think that may be true. However, um, it is a remarkable point that uh, the leader of the Conservatives has put this amendment forward um, by the own figures that have just been stated by the leader of the Conservatives. We'd run out of funds uh, for this rise in three years which means the Conservatives are either proposing something alternative for next year, which they haven't set out, or they're proposing to, on top of the council tax increase that will be needed next year, whatever that might be, hopefully quite small, put an extra 4.9% on that year and make people face an even higher bill next year instead of evening out the cost. Generally, I agree with the Conservatives that council tax generally is a very unfair tax on wealth and I'll set that out more later on and reforms are being worked on by Welsh Government which they aren't by UK Government to help particularly renters and people on mortgage payments but just generally this is a budget that is ex extremely irresponsible and it's incredible to see Councillor Carroll <laughs> continue in the steps of Liz Truss. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Brooks, you want to speak on the amendment? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Yes, yeah, so we should speak on the amendment. Um, I've sat through some budgets in my time as, as a local authority member since 2008. And I have to say, I've heard some of the most reckless comments here tonight. In the situation that we're facing, we've had 12 years of cuts from the Tory UK government. We've been protected to a certain extent, extent in Wales, thankfully, by Welsh Government. We only have to look over the border at the budgets they're set in, the negative budgets that they're set in. Councils are facing bankruptcy because they haven't had the protection of Welsh Government. The blame purely lies at the 12 years of cuts that have come from the UK Government. And to hear reckless comments and a, a clear lack of understanding about the reserves, the use of reserves, what is restricted, what is allocated. And I mean, I can hear George there. Luckily, he's on mute because he's just churning away comments then, which are no, no, no doubt derogative. But these are the simple facts. These are very straight, simple facts. We have put a huge amount of work into the budget to get a balanced budget and to try and protect our most vulnerable residents to the best that we can. Our statutory services have to be the, at the forefront of everything that we do. And I do firmly believe that this is an incredibly reckless um, amendment and I certainly will not be supporting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Charles, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, this budget is hitting the residents of the Vale at their most vulnerable time, and I'm sure nobody could disagree with that. Despite the massive increases in their daily living costs, the council is proposing to raise the rate of council tax by virtually the maximum amount that, it, that I think it should never be. To describe this as the mean of most authorities seems misleading when some authorities, such as Torvane, have announced an increase of 2%. During these obviously difficult times, the aim should be to save money on the unnecessary, for example, on salaries for additional directors or alternatively to make additional contributions from reserves. If this is not a rainy day, then when is a rainy day? The proposed reductions of bin collections and charging for the removal of garden waste will affect most of these on low incomes, the most vulnerable, the elderly who have no vehicle to transport waste to the council recycling centres. It is also likely that it would increase fly tipping, which would cost the council. 
the 67% increase in rental for allotments, many of which are used by pensioners, is an extra hardship on the most vulnerable. It's the reason that we are yet again back to remote meetings because the council might have been aware that there is a demonstration outside the council offices this evening about the 67% rise in council tax. Just to say, it's cost of living is not good enough. We need to help families and we can afford to help families. Cardiff RCT have lower reserves in proportional teams. This will be a one-off, which is why the money is, st is still there. How can we set next year's budget now? I ask myself, what's going to be happening next year? How can we set it? And it is for these reasons that I cannot support this. I really care as much as you may not think that Conservatives do, and you might be um, politicising this event. I can assure you that we care very, very much about our residents in the Vale of Glen Morgan. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Perry, please. Uh, good evening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow, it's a horrible tax. It wasn't meant to be a fair tax. Um, and we're in a horrible situation. I just had a quick look and councils in England, which are dropping around into bankruptcy or certain financial difficulties like ourselves, or well, not quite like ourselves, because they're far worse than we are, um, or because of the policies of the UK government over the last 13 years. And it's turned into conflict on a local level. We're not collaborating, we're squabbling, trying to score party political points which doesn't help anybody. Um, we're in a situation where, yeah, I would love to you know, be saying we're not going to raise council tax. That will help some people. Um, but then again, that would mean perhaps cutting jobs. As Mark said, you can only spend your reserves once. Once you've spent them, they've gone. So if you use them this year to keep council tax down, next year you've got to increase it by a never bigger amount. So we're not in a good position. Um, and I think rather than fighting amongst ourselves, we should be looking at Westminster and pointing the finger at Westminster because that is where the problem comes from. And it's been coming over for 13 years. In fact, you can get, trace it back to um, when, when uh, council tax was established back in the 1990s as a horrible tax that um, made sure that people who were less able to afford it paid more than people who perhaps can pay more tax. So the, the amendment is, is a little bit short sighted. It's not going to out of the hole. And really, we should stop playing politics and try and collaborate a little bit more for the good of our communities. And I'll just stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Charles, is that a legacy hand? Uh, if so, can I ask you to lower it, please? Thank you. Councillor Hennessy. Yes, thank you, Mayor. For a long period of time, the Vale Run Labour Council have wasted money on things we don't need, such as two extra directors, uh, such as two extra directors, costing the taxpayers of the Vale a lot of money. But if you ask members of the public what these directors do, they wouldn't be able to tell you. When you compare this to the fact the Labour Run Council have the audacity to increase the council tax to 4.9% when there are elderly people who don't even know where they are going to get the funds to pay for green waste collection. This is absolutely disgusting. And I will be voting for this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Charles, your hand is still raised. Um, you, you've already spoken on this matter, so unless you have a point of order, you don't um, have the right to speak again. So if you could lower your hand, I would be grateful. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Robert Fisher, please. Uh, thank you. Yes. Um, Councillor John and Councillor jo Johnson spoke about the I suppose what can be described as the dire state of the economy at the moment and uh, its effects upon people. And uh, I, I agree with those comments entirely. 
And I feel that this is exactly why we need to consider approving this amendment. We are all here because we want to help the people of the Vale and to serve them. And we have it in our power this evening to help people who are being faced to make very difficult decisions, watching every pound. I therefore support Councillor Carroll's amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Perks, please. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'd, I'd like to speak on this amendment uh, today. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm against this amendment. I just think that it's so short sighted to say that we need to dip into the actual reserves when, like everyone keeps saying, you can only spend them once. You know, it, and actually, they're probably allocated um, to other things. And I just think, you know, it is for the Conservatives to come on here and talk about how they care about the people of the Vale is absolutely mind boggling, really, when we've had 12 years of cuts to the local authorities, where jobs have gone in the local authorities, services have gone in the local authorities. I was I was working in the authorities when jobs were going. So I do know that jobs went, you know, the serv you can't provide services if you haven't got the staff. When you've had 12 years of cuts, you haven't got that staff. Also, the way that you've mismanagement, mismanaged the budget uh, in Westminster, to come here and say that we should be doing this, that and the other, when you can't even manage the finances of the UK government and have plunged us into a cost of living crisis, I think this is absolutely ridiculous and I will not be supporting this amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Fisher, can I assume that's the legacy hand? And if so, um, could you lower it, please? Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Penn, please. And then I think um, I don't see any more hands, so we'll give uh, the leader the opportunity to respond and then we will move to a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have to say, um, Councillor Carroll and the Conservative group, they do seem to live in cloud cuckoo land and um, they would play fast and loose with our finances if they're in charge and I'm really glad they're not. Um, An uncosted amendment. Um, and I, I'd like to know that what services he'd cut in the future, um, how big our council tax increase would be in years to come. Um, we'd be playing catch up for years. Um, it's a typical short sighted idea with no view to the future. Just a headline today and completely financially irresponsible. Um, I would never support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, as I say, there are no more hands. So, um, Councillor Burnett, please, and we'll draw this debate on this amendment to a close. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I won't go through all, all of the comments. Did um, Councillor Driscoll want to come in before I speak? I've just yeah, seen his Councillor hand. Driscoll, yes. Yeah, sorry, do you want to speak on the amendment? If that's if that's OK, maybe not too you, late. Am you're I? you're just getting in under the wire. Please feel oh, free to make your wonderful. contribution. Um, yeah, I, I will um, come in if it's OK. And um, it's, it's, it's great for you not to bash the Conservatives. And quite frankly, the last um, one or two years. Um, sorry, sorry to them, interrupt so. you, Councillor. Just could you switch your camera on, please? Oh, so that we can see, see you when you're talking. Oh, you want to see me? Ah, we, we do yeah. indeed. There That's the requirement okay. when councillors are speaking. Thank oh, you sorry. very much. Please continue. I, I haven't done my hair either. Um, it's easy to bash the Conservatives in the last 18 months, 12, uh, two years. They haven't done themselves any favour. But I, I think you need to look a bit closer to home at um, some of the mistakes your own your own government's made in um, in Cardiff, in Cardiff, with the um, 155 million pound wasted on the. Um, relief road that never never happened anyway won't go there but i think people need to realize that um the vela glamorgan you could go on about the bandee and all that but actually in real terms the people of glamorgan are the third highest paying council taxes in 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 wales um we pay a massive amount compared to some of the other places um i will be supporting the i will be supporting the amendment um I can understand some of your views, and it's easy. As I said, it's easy to um, bash George, but he's, he's sat down and worked on these, on these, this. The 
the last 12 years haven't been well, haven't been good for everybody. Um, but if you look, if you look now at the reserves, they're higher than they've ever been. And the last six years since I've been a councillor, um, the um, we've sold a surplus every year. And I'm sure we'll show a surplus next year, and we'll all be saying, "Oh, how did we how did we show that?" Um, but like I say, I will be supporting um, Councillor Cowell. And one thing, um, I find it quite disface, distasteful for um, our leader. Every time she doesn't agree with somebody, she smirks and laughs, and she's doing it now. Um, she was very rude. I thought she was very rude to Councillor Franks earlier, um, and she's done it to several of our speakers tonight. But um, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I don't. I don't think we need to bring uh, personal comments into the debate. Um, can I ask uh, the leader to respond, please? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we started off this amendment hearing that this is the single most important decision that we will make this year. Then we had a tirade about whether or not. We're in the office or at home. For the record, I'm in the office. Um, then we had an amendment that obviously had not been based upon any of the financial projections or any of the reports that we've actually discussed for the last six months. I particularly drew members' attention to Appendix E of this report, which was the head of finance section 151 officers report on the robustness of estimates and sufficiency of reserves. Now, in, in most scrutinies, either myself or one of the cabinet has actually gone through the issues of raiding reserves, the issues that reserves are either, they can be restricted and restricted, earmarked, etc. The reason we have reserves is because they're put aside for things we want to do. The only reserves that we have are completely unearmarked is the general fund. And if you have a look at that um, Appendix E, and there's a section, as you might spot, on adequacy of reserves. And it actually says general fund is set at a policy level to cover unknown risks, smoothing reserves to add ad address pressures is in a managed way. Um, we also use insurance reserves to set at actually determined levels, um, reserves to address corporate risks, reserves to invest in the future development of services and to contribute to the council's capital programme, as well as ring fence reserves for schools and the housing revenue account. It actually says the authority's policy on general balances, and this is backed up by things like, you know, treasury training. I don't know if you came um, to hold a minimum prudent level, which is currently set at 10 million. The projected level of general fund, fund balances will be 3.91 of net revenue ben, be, budget at the, at the beginning of 23-24, dropping to 3.74. And it is considered that this remains a comfortable level as the percentage is in the range between three and five percent of new revenue budget and in, and in excess of 10 million. It actually lays out exactly why we have that much. What I would say to you in terms of council tax levels, have a little look at Conoy. Have a little look at Conoy and the level of council tax that they're having to set currently to be able to provide services, 9.9%. And then just have a little think at who was the leader of Conoy and what he's thinking now that he's in the Senate in the Conservative group. This is not a game. This is really not a game. In 20, 19 you imploded your own group by the types of suggestions that you're making now you've gone through every scrutiny committee and not made a single suggestion that we could work on and then you've come at this with somebody that wants to raid the piggy bank and say oh well, let's just take 4.2 million i'm really sorry 
but I can't even consider it because it's not a realistic amendment and I will have no hesitation in voting against this amendment. Thank you, Leader. Uh, so the amendment that is before us um, is that 4.23 million should be taken out of reserves and council tax should be frozen for 2023-24. Um, can we move to a vote, please? Uh, Chief Executive, could you take us through that vote? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so if I um, ask each councillor in turn, if you are for the amendment are set out against the amendment or if you wish to abstain. So I'm going to start with Councillor Anne Asprey, please. Against the amendment. Councillor Julie Aviat. Against the amendment. Councillor Gareth Ball. Against the amendment. Councillor Rhiannon Birch. Against. against. Councillor Bronwyn Brooks. <coughs> Against the amendment. Councillor Gillian Bruce. For the amendment. Councillor Ian Buckley. Against the amendment. Councillor Liz Burnett. Against the amendment. Councillor Samantha Campbell. Against. Councillor George Carroll. For. Councillor Christine Cave. For the amendment. Councillor Charles Champion. For. Councillor Janice Charles. For the amendment. Councillor Millie Collins. Against the amendment. Councillor Marianne Kaup. Against the amendment. Councillor Pamela Drake. Against. Councillor Vince Driscoll. For the amendment. Councillor Anthony Ernest. For the amendment. Councillor Robert Fisher. For the amendment. Councillor Chris Franks. Against. Councillor Wendy Gilligan. Against the amendment. Councillor Emma Goodjohn. Against the amendment. Councillor Ewan Goodjohn. Against the amendment. Councillor Stephen Haynes. For the amendment. Councillor Howard Hamilton. Against the amendment. Councillor Sally Hanks. Against the amendment. Councillor William Hennessy. For the motion. Councillor Nick Hodges. Against. Councillor Mark Hooper. Against. Councillor Catherine Iannucci. Against. Councillor Gwyn John. Against the amendment. Councillor Ian Johnson. And Ervin against. Councillor Susan Lloyd Selby. Against. Councillor Belinda Lovelock Edwards. Against the amendment. Councillor Julie Lynch Wilson. Against the amendment. Councillor Kevin Marney. Against. Councillor Naomi Marshallsey. Against. Councillor Michael Morgan. Against the amendment. Councillor Jane Norman. Against the amendment. Councillor Helen Payne. Against the amendment. Councillor Elliot Penn. Against the amendment. Councillor Sandra Perks. Against the amendment. Councillor Ian Perry. Against the amendment. Councillor Joanna Prithero. Against. Councillor Ruba Sivignanum. Against. Councillor Kari Stallard. And Erbin against. Councillor Neil Thomas. Against. Councillor Rhys Thomas. For the amendment. Councillor Stefan William. And Erbin a question. Councillor Eddie Williams. Against the amendment. Councillor Mark Wilson. Against the amendment. And Councillor Nicholas Wood, please. For the amendment. 
OK, thank you, Mayor. I make that 12 members for the amendment, 40 against and no abstention. So the amendment fails. Thank you, uh, Chief Executive, for confirming that. So to remind councillors, then we are debating the original recommendations that are before us in relation to approving this year's uh, budget and that uh, council tax be increased to uh, by 4.9%. Um, I can see that um, the monitoring officer has her hand up, so if I can bring you in next, please, Debbie. Thank you. Just to, to mention, Councillor Johnson gave advance notice of a, a further amendment. Yes, the, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm aware that the debate on the original motion is still open and bringing Councillor Johnson in at this stage. Uh, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thanks, Monitoring Officer, for uh, uh, ensuring that I, I, I'm heard at this point. Um, as I uh, previously intimated, I, I would like to move an amendment on behalf of the Plaid Cymru Group, and I have listened to um, you know, to the comments that took place in the uh, the previous debate regarding the Conservative amendment. The um, particularly interesting, I thought, were comments regarding people's concerns uh, about the increase in, in, in council tax and the um, the fear that um, that these things were uh, having a, an unfair impact upon uh, our residents. Um, but also, um, as I said myself, the, the, the issue relating to um, the uncosted nature of the uh, amendment which was put forward by the Conservatives. I think my, my first thought um, regarding that, the comment about you know, the, the, uh, the impact of uh, increases on, on council tax is that the band D increase for the Vale of Morgan, even at 4.9%, I think is around um, £75, which um, is a lot of money. I mean, it's the whatever, I think the £1.32 a week is the figure suggested within the budget papers. Um, but the, you know, people on both the Conservative and Labour parties uh, happily voted through uh, an increase in council house rents of you know, roughly £300 when that was discussed a few months ago. So I think we need to put into consideration actually that the increase on council taxes um, you know, is less than, for example, the increase on you know, the housing costs that, that people have received as a result of this uh, this council. Uh, in terms of the amendment I want to put forward, um, what I want to do, unlike um, the suggestions from the Conservatives now, is to actually run through some of the ways in which this can be funded in the way that uh, our uh, our uh, accounts operate. So um, rather than increasing the, uh, the council tax rate by the proposed 4.9%, uh, I would propose instead an increase of around 2% uh, achieved through the use of smoothing motion of uh, around two million pounds. So, intent in the context of the amendment that we have here, this is an increase uh, of two percent uh, in the uh, in the recommendation that's come from from cabinet. And I'll set out four reasons which I think underpin why this is uh, affordable and and sensible to do. Uh, firstly, Mayor, that the council consistently overcollects the anticipated amount of council tax by around one point five million to two million pounds uh, each financial year. It was recently confirmed once again. Uh, in the revenue monitoring for the current financial year as being an anticipated um, over collection of around 1.5 million pounds. Uh, last year it, it was two million pounds and it's been um, you know around those figures since I joined the council. In fact the first year I was in the council I believe it was 2.9 million pounds and I asked a question about this uh, in 2017 because I couldn't get my head around the fact that we we kept doing this uh, and that's because Mayor, it, it's a feature not a bug. We um, we we, uh, we uh, we always do it. And while I can see the benefit for the council of having that bonus extra money, I don't believe it's right that, that we do this deliberately each year in terms of that over collection. We have an anticipated collection rate of 97.1% uh, in each year. Um, and we get that. But then, of course, we also get the arrears that, that accumulate um, and are paid off at a later point in time. So that money comes to us and it's utilised for various purposes. But I think it's unfair that we um, we take this bonus and we don't actually include it within our normal systems. Um, we've had a chat already um, tonight about the introduction of the garden waste collection service being, being a fee paying service, a subscription service. Um, the, the garden tax, I think, is probably one way of putting it. Now, uh, it's not necessarily one which I support as a, uh, um, as a service, as a change, but uh, it seems to me there's really no discussion of biodiversity in the nature emergency and also what will happen to 
large amounts of uncollected garden waste. However, from a purely financial perspective, the decision seems to underestimate the amounts likely to be collected from this service. Uh, we were told, I think I heard at Cabinet and in um, scrutiny meetings, that around 60% of households currently use the service, but estimates are only that 20% of households would sign up for the subscription. As an effective monopoly, it's likely that many more will do so, and every sign of above the anticipated number is an increase in council income. If that number were closer to 40% than 20% of households, then we'd be in receipt of an additional £500,000, a doubling of the amount of money that we've currently anticipated. It's uh, one, one, one minute, Councillor Johnson, please. Minute, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thirdly, the amount of investment income we receive is likely to increase under the current higher than trend interest rates. In the current financial year, we're expecting £750,000 of investment income, and that's been similarly operated in the most recent forecast for next year. If Again, if we have a, a full year of higher rates, then rather than the in-year rise, as we've recently seen, that amount will only increase. Mayor, the Welsh Government's final settlement last week, which is in our, um, in our supplementary papers, provided the Council with an additional £178,000. This money could be used to reduce council tax or offset some of the service reductions which have been part of this budget. It's disappointing, therefore, this has been banked by the council rather than used to support our residents. I've set out, Mayor, how at a time of cost of living crisis, this council can sustainably deliver a lower council tax increase of 2% rather than 4.9%. I ask that we have a recorded vote on this proposal and I ask that all members of this council consider uh, how they, that this can be achieved and that they support this. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hooper. I'd like to second Councillor Johnson's proposal. I think it's a sensible, pragmatic and caring approach and, what, and a solution that can be supported by people from across this uh, council here tonight. And one that actually shows to the people who are listening in that we do care about the concerns they've got because we are, as we are all aware of, facing a crisis that's likely to get worse before it gets better. This isn't the time to start increasing council taxes in the way that we have been doing and this is something that deserves the support of this entire um, council. I reserve the right to speak in the debate depending on how this um, works later after this amendment if I can. Thank you. Thank you councillor. So uh, just for clarity, uh, just to ensure that I've understood the amendment correctly, councillor Johnson, uh, the proposal is that council tax should be increased by 2% in 2023-24, offset by using a smoothing process of £2 million of reserves. Can you just confirm that? Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor. I mean, the I believe that the amendment I'm making to the recommendation to Cabinet is that um, two percent rather than four percent. But the, the rest of it is just my explanation. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Thank you. So that's the amendment before you, uh, councillors. And again, um, we open the debate. Uh, Councillor, Fra oh, sorry, just to say, Councillor Johnson, um, that I've also noted your call for a recorded vote. So when we finish the debate and we come to the point where we're voting, um, please be assured that we'll deal with that matter then. So that's not been lost. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Franks. Thank you. Um, I can well understand that the officers have put together uh, a technical budget, uh, which the cabinet has simply adopted. However, regrettably, it totally ignores the reality of a council run by the by the uh, current cabinet. Uh, it's a cabinet with a dreadful record. The shocking failings of the last few years for cabinet to effectively manage the services and projects of the council are plain to see. I mentioned uh, in the capital budget debate the situation at Hayeswood where a company went bankrupt. We were told that the uh, council stepped in brilliantly and engaged with the subcontractors to continue the uh, social housing project. Um, the council was promised that an explanation would be given about the situation. I gave the leader another opportunity tonight. There was nothing. Uh, we have a growing list of schools in special measures. I'm not clear how this budget will um, address this uh, uh, difficult situation, as you seem determined to cut £2 million from education. I asked the cabinet member what would be the impact on each school. Uh, eventually, a nebulous reply came back, simply cutting up 
cutting and pasting an officer's draft that said nothing. Where is the cabinet responsibility? Uh, it, I also recall the leader saying we protected the statutory um, duties. Well, I'm not sure how cutting two million pounds uh, from education is protecting our uh, statutory duties. How can an increase of 5% plus charges when you can't spend what is already uh, uh, there uh, is bizarre. The veil is in <clears> decline <throat> and the cabinet is failing to respond to poor standards. Now, curiously, it is it was said earlier on that all elected members should have responsibilities regarding finance. Here, here, I, I agree 100%. The leader says we must all be engaged. I agree with that again. We were all given yet another pompous lecture on what we should be doing. Yet the failure to answer my legitimate questions on capital show how arrogant cabinet has become. There is no faith in in this budget, I'm afraid, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ewan Good John, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Again, I'll, I'll just speak on the amendment in this situation. Um, I do appreciate uh, Councillor Johnson's attempt to uh, find a middle ground between uh, the Labour budget and the Conservative amendment. Um, and I do appreciate how well spoken he's been about it uh, in comparison to the Conservative amendment. Um, however, if you actually look at what is being proposed here, um, sadly, it is the same thing. Uh, Councillor Johnson says that we can use uh, extra money that may come from the garden waste charge. I believe I'm the one that mentioned that it's a possibility at scrutiny committee, um, but it's not a guarantee. Um, we need to be prudent about this. We have professional codes to maintain. We need to be prudent with taxpayer money and to assume that they're going to sign up for this service uh, is not any better than assuming we'll get more council tax because more people will pay it. Um, the rest, you say, is to come from smoothing reserves. Well, we're already using smoothing reserves of 4.5 million. Um, and I think using any more may be irresponsible. And as much as I appreciate the attempts, Councillor Johnson, I, I simply can't agree with this motion because once again, it's the same thing. You're backing off reserves that can only be used once. Uh, for a temporary solution to cut council tax, which will then have to be increased again next year. It's not a, a solution for the long term. And uh, if I can see a solution for the long term, then I'll support it. And that's what this Labour budget seems to be at the moment. But uh, I'll, I'll talk more on that later. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Stephen Haynes, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just get my hand down. Yes, uh, I, I find this amendment quite strange, or, or, or not as strange as perhaps, but uh, the fact that uh, Councillor Johnson was so scathing at the Conservative uh, uh, amendment, and there's 1.5% uh, 1.5 million difference in the two. But that being said, it's about saving money to residents. So I, I welcome it, as though I do not welcome as much as the uh, Conservative one. I also do note, mind you, that uh, Labour members don't blame the Clyde for everything or anything, but every time they do anything, it's an anti-Conservative thing. But that's just, I suppose, politics. It's a bit above me, I suppose. Perhaps if they say Plied three times, they appear. So um, anyway... In the in, in its in its essence, it's no different from the Labour uh, and the uh, Conservative um, amendment, and as such, it only being 1.5 million difference, and it will help residents. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to support your amendment, uh, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Carroll, please. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I would pretty much um, echo the comments of Councillor Haynes. I think my position on this is quite well documented. My preference is for a freeze. That said, I would sooner see a 2% rise than a 4.9% rise. The decision has already been taken 
on the threes. Regrettably, that was voted down. So for the reasons that Councillor Haynes state, stated, i.e. it's better to have the lowest rise possible, I too will support the amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilson, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, we've heard some good points here, interesting points um, by Plaid here. I mean, obviously, the first few things, let's get a few facts straight. Um, we have taken a long time to get to this point in terms of the budget process. He has taken a considerable amount of discussions, many meetings, not just off cabinet, but informal cabinet and, and discussion with officers about what we do. And we do make difficult decisions, as, as you appreciate. It's not always easy to make those decisions. I mean, obviously, in terms of fees and charges, yes, I would like to have no charges on things. But in reality is we're facing a £9 million budget deficit. That's the reality. And we've got to bridge that gap. We don't have the luxury of having a deficit account on income expenditure, as we have done in many years of this Conservative government. We don't have that luxury. We have got to fund a fully balanced budget. And this is where we are, aren't we? Because as, as councillors, we have a duty to do that, a legal duty to provide a balanced budget. Otherwise, we get surcharged. And, and that's the first point. So we've got to be responsible. And yes, Councillor Franks, we have got to be all financially responsible. And I totally agree with you on that. And you are a very experienced councillor. And you know all too well that that's what we got to do. And yes, we do ask questions of officers. Of course we do about why things happen. But it's been very good reasons. We have been going through an economic calamity in the last couple of years. And due to policies which which I, I found quite unbelievable. Um, and in terms of the motion to get to reduce our general reserves by two million, I can't support that. Our, ge our general reserves are quite actually quite prudent. They're not that high at all. And if you look at the report from Section 151 officer in this, in this it says as much. So really, I, ca I cannot support it. And yes, you may be relying on optimism about making sure we have council tax collection as good as last year. But we don't know if that will be the case for this current year, don't we? We just don't know. And also, you know, I obviously like to see more garden waste than 20%, but again, we don't know. So we have to be prudent and sensible. And that's why I'd be voting against this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, Councillor Ian Perry, please. Hi, uh, yeah. Um... There seems to the Vale Council has built up some reserves from having surpluses, and that there is a problem there that the Vale Council sometimes isn't very good at spending money. Um, the private sector does do well out of us, uh, but sometimes we, we struggle to deliver things that residents would like. For example, resurfacing of roads, and we have you know huge areas of road that are, have no potholes but don't have a surface anymore or they have a patchwork of pothole repairs. So there are things that the residents are crying out for and perhaps don't mind spending money on. We're in a difficult position. We all know that. No one's happy who's in this meeting, I don't believe. Um, yeah, do we dig into our reserves or do we instead invest that in fixing things that are priority for residents? You can't do both. So I'll just go away off camera and do a little bit more thought on this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Wilson, can I assume that's a legacy hand? It is for some technical reason. You won't let me lower my hand. Right. I, I will bear that in mind. If that issue continues, then you do need to speak again, Councillor. Um, can I ask Someone's you loaded it for me. Uh, thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. We've done that behind the scenes. Uh, Thank you. So, uh, Councillor uh, Nick Hodges, please. And again, uh, Councillor Perry, if you could lower your hand, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as some of us have been bragging about how long we've been on council, it'll be 28 years for me. So I've seen quite a few budgets in my time. A um, couple of comments uh, on this debate. Perhaps if I say Tory three times, they'll disappear. Uh, that would be nice, perhaps. The difference is actually 2.2 million. 
Um, I do like the new caring, sharing Tories who are happy and uh, prepared to raise housing rents by £300 this year to some of the poorer people in our community. Um, God bless them. What I will say is this. Um, it's been said a number of times during a number of debates as the budget, as it was formulating, has gone through the various committees, is that um, inflation has done us wrong. It's done us bad. Well, yes. And if you have money in your account, the, the reserves, as we call them, that value of that money is slowly uh, decreasing. So whilst you can only spend it once, perhaps it's better to spend some of it while it's still got some value. Uh, I, I think a 2% uh, increase in the council tax rise this year is possible. It's prudent. That's a word that Mark Wilson likes using a lot, prudent. Um, what I would say is that the time has come where we need to radically look at how we operate our services. And sometimes um, I see no change here rather than just jiggling figures around every year by our cabinet with just listening to what the officers tell them consistently. I would say it's time to take a political stance in this council and actually decide how we as a council want to operate uh, not only the services we provide, but how we actually pay for them. I will be supporting this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I see no further uh, hands, so I assume that nobody else wants to uh, come into this debate. And on that basis, I will uh, ask the executive leader to exercise her right to respond. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just very briefly, we, we talk about the the use of, of smoothing reserves to um, to reduce um, the council tax increase. Smoothing reserves, as we're using them, is where there's a projected um, spike that we can get over, such as homelessness, such as, as energy costs, etc. Not something that's going to be ongoing. So um, it, it is our view that the use of smoothing reserves, which is currently laid out as 2.8 million, is about as far as we can go. For people saying that we should use reserves, yes, we are. Um, the reserves by March of, of this year, um, because of the pressures we've been under in the current financial year, will go down to 94.5 million. And they're projected in terms of the fact we're spending them to do things um, is going down to, to 53.376 million next year. The reserves are there for a purpose, with the exception of general fund, and they're being used for those purposes. So those are the projections. There, There is not a magic cut the million to do another bit of smoothing. So um, we we did look through additional use of reserves. We are completely mindful of the pressures on the residents of the Vale of Glamorgan. Those pressures have affected this council. And as I've said to you, you know, inflation has gone up when we first started looking at it for 21.6 million up to currently 25.7 million inflation. This council has the same pressures on it as our residents. And to bring in a council tax increase of less than half the rate of inflation, um, I, th I think that's probably about as best as we can do. I would like to do more, but I think half the rate of inflation or less than half the rate of inflation is, is where we'll be staying. So um, I, I will be um, voting against this motion or this amendment. Thank you, councillors. So, um... That brings the debate to uh, on the amendment to an end. Uh, we'll move to a vote. Um, just to remind you that Councillor Johnson has called for a recorded vote and in line with the Council's constitution, that needs to be supported by six uh, members. So um, I want to see a show of hands to support a recorded vote, please. 
Thank you. We have more than reached the threshold for that, so we will move to a recorded vote. Thank you, councillors, on this amendment. And just to remind you uh, to ensure that everybody's clear that the proposal is a 2% increase in council tax. And if I can hand over to the chief exec to take us through the vote, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mia. <clears throat> if I start then, um, and if you can say whether you're for the amendment, against the amendment or abstaining. Start with Councillor Anne Asprey, please. For the amendment. Councillor Julie Aviat. Against the amendment. Councillor Gareth Ball. Against the amendment. Councillor Rhiannon Birch. Against. Councillor Bronwyn Brooks. Against the amendment. Councillor Gillian Bruce. For the amendment. Councillor Ian Buckley. Against the amendment. Councillor Liz Burnett. Against the amendment. Councillor Samantha Campbell. For the amendment. Councillor George Carroll. For. Councillor Christine Cave. For. Councillor Charles Champion. For the amendment. Councillor Janice Charles. For the amendment. Councillor Millie Collins. For the amendment. Councillor Marianne Kaup. For the amendment. Councillor Pamela Drake. Against the amendment. Councillor Vince Driscoll. For the amendment. Councillor Anthony Ernest. For the amendment. Councillor Robert Fisher. For the amendment. Councillor Chris Franks. For the amendment. Councillor Wendy Gilligan. Against the amendment. Councillor Emma Goodjohn. Councillor Emma Goodjohn. Against. Councillor Ewan Goodjohn. Against. Councillor Stephen Haynes. For the amendment. Councillor Howard Hamilton. Against the amendment. Councillor Sally Hanks. Against the amendment. Councillor William Hennessy. For the amendment. Councillor Nick Hodges. For. Councillor Mark Hooper. For. Councillor Catherine Iannucci. Against the amendment. Councillor Gwyn John. Against the amendment. Councillor Ian Johnson. Oblied. For. Councillor Susan Lloyd Selby. Against. Councillor Belinda Livluck Edwards. Against the amendment. Councillor Julie Lynch Wilson. Against the amendment. Councillor Kevin Marney. For. Councillor Naomi Marshall C. And I've been against. Councillor Michael Morgan. Against the amendment. Councillor Jane Norman. Against the amendment. Councillor Helen Payne. Against the amendment. Councillor Elliot Penn. Against the amendment. Councillor Sandra Perks. Against the amendment. Councillor Ian Perry. Uh, yeah, um, against. Councillor Joanna Prothero. Against the amendment. Councillor Ruba Sivignanum. Against. Councillor Caris Stallard. An Erbin against. Councillor Neil Thomas. Against the amendment. Councillor Rhys Thomas. For the amendment. Councillor Stefan William. Oblied. Councillor Eddie Williams. Against the amendment. Councillor Mark Wilson. Against the amendment. And Councillor Nicholas Wood. For the amendment. Okay, thank you, um, Mayor. That I make that 21 for the amendment, 30 against with no abstentions. So the amendment fails. Uh, thank you, Chief Exec. 
Um, I, I've got uh, just asking if we could double check the figures because I think we're 22 Two. for the amendment and 30 against. Um, no. Monitoring officer, does that? Yeah, I've got 22 um, for 30 against, but as the um, chief executive has said, the amendment fails. Apologies, May. I've got to get sharper at counting quickly. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so but, uh, that... but, sure, but surely as, the, as the, an amount, and this is a recorded vote, you have sorry, to get figures correct anyway. Sorry, Cook, I, I have absolutely... Uh, sorry, it's Kevin Mar I have yeah. no idea who's yeah. speaking. Uh, Councillor Marnie, yeah. I, I yeah. have to say to you that you cannot speak at this point unless you wish to raise a point of order. And if you wish to raise a point of order, please raise your hand and do that in the appropriate way. Councillor Marnie, you may now raise a point of order. Just to remind you, the point of order is... Uh, can only be in relation to a procedural or a, a legal matter. So do you wish to speak? Yes, please. And the reason I dived in there, uh, I will put my hand up, to be fair, was because surely you have to get that count right as it was a recorded count. I appreciate the amendment has failed, but surely you must satisfy yourself that everything's on the level before moving on. So, uh, I think we've done that, uh, Councillor Marnie, but I can see that the Chief Executive is happy to respond to that point. I, I would only to agree 100% with Councillor Marnie, which is why I apologised immediately and why I think you and the monitoring officer stepped in to correct me. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Wilson, um, again, uh, do you have a point of order that you want to make at this point? No, you put your hand down. Thank you. So I just want to confirm the outcome of that vote, which was 22 for the amendment, 30 against the amendment, therefore the amendment has fallen. And therefore the recommendation that's before council tonight uh, remains the same. And again, I'm going to remind you for the sake of clarity that the council approves a council tax increase of 4.9% and that the budget for 2023-24 is uh, approved. Um, I, if there are no further amendments, I do think we've had a very robust debate on this, so I, I'm going to allow a, a, a few more comments and then I'm going to suggest that we move to a vote. So, uh, Councillor Hooper, um, we'll bring you in next. Thank you, Mayor, and I'll be brief with my comments and they are meant to be constructive. I'm disappointed that um, Councillor Johnson's amendment failed. However, I um, just want to make a point on process because I think some of this process could be improved next year as I think there are some flaws in it. The, the budget is, is not set in isolation. As we've been told, we're in the middle of a, the council's corporate plan, a plan that runs from 2020 to 2025. That's a strategic framing of the council's priorities and associated costs and revenues to meet those priorities. Establishing such a plan, whether or not we agree with its priorities, should mean the organisation avoids lurching from year to year where issues like ensuring full cost recovery of services are dealt with over the medium term. We didn't need to bring all these increases like the increase in allotment costs in this time. This should have been done over a period of time. Further, next year's budgets are largely set as a cost plus basis on this year's expected outturn. This embeds inefficiency, maintains bottlenecks, and in my opinion, discourages departmental innovation. In our budget meeting with the Chief Exec and Section 15 Officer, I was pleased to hear that some moves have been made to budget from a zero base according to needs and plans. But he said there were insufficient resources available to undertake a full zero based budgeting exercise across the council. This is where the opportunity, this is a point that I've raised in scrutiny committees. I raised it in the Audit and Governance Committee as well. So this isn't new. And I know the leader has responded to me previously on this regard. But given the changes that we've seen because of COVID that have been enforced us and the way that this council operates, it is now to chant that we do have the opportunity to look at things from a zero base budget. I would urge the council to take this on board for future exercises. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we will take a few more comments. Uh, Councillor uh, Ewan Goodjohn, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, this will be my last time speaking on this subject. Okay? Um, I do have the figures with me, uh, and I thought it would be of interest to the Council regarding Council tax and inflation increases since 1997 from Stats Wales and from the ONS. 
The average increase since 1997 in council tax, people will be shocked to know, is 5.3%. This year, it is proposed 4.9%. I do appreciate, I really do appreciate certain councillors' attempt to lower the council tax because the council tax is an extremely unfair tax on wealth. Originally the poll tax, it is now one of the most unfair taxes in the UK and in the world, simply because it is a tax that is the same for a renter, for someone who is paying a mortgage and someone who owns a home. This is not a proper tax on wealth and exceptions and reductions have have to be made to try and make it work in any semblance of a progressive manner. However, the council is stuck between a rock and a hard place. The council tax cannot be decreased so long as the money we get in from Welsh government, which is trickled down from the UK government, does not increase more than our costs. And quite frankly, it would be irresponsible of us to spend taxpayer money in ways which threatens the council's finances. Now, in real terms, this council tax increase is the lowest in the council's history. And that is something we must appreciate, something remarkable from our officers, from our cabinet members, and to go even lower would be irresponsible, in my opinion, unless it can be properly funded, which there has been no proposals to properly fund it other than to use even more reserves. And reserves have been good because of good, prudent management. And we are using them now, but we're not using them all now because, and this is a factor that has been touched on time and time again, as long as there is a Tory government in the UK, we can never trust what might happen to our finances in the future. And we cannot use all of our reserves because quite simply, if there is another issue like the cost of living crisis again, if there's another pandemic, if there's another Ukraine war, if there's another crisis, how will we fund it? How will we have anything in reserve? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Cowp, please. Thank you. Just put my um, camera on. Um, regarding the consultation on the budget, Council have had 773 responses. Council said they would listen to responses and to scrutiny committees, but nothing has changed. The budget remains as the council set out. So the council has not listened, I would argue. And I would also ask that in future, in online consultations, there should always be an option to respond via an email. I am extremely disappointed that the council has decided to go ahead with the 400% increase in the cost of black caddies. Concern has been expressed by officers that nappy caddies could be used by residents to boost the amount of waste to be collected if they were offered free or at a price less than cost. But I suggest that this concern could be tackled in different ways. The caddies will be used largely for nappies, hygiene waste, sanitary and incontinence products. These items can, of course, all go into the black bags, which are incinerated. However, with the move to a three weekly collection, this will be unacceptable in modern day Wales, especially in hot weather. The cost of this could be £30 per family. The rise, though only covering the cost to the Vale, is totally unacceptable and will affect the most vulnerable of families. Putting the cost up by 400% is not the answer. Vulnerable families will suffer the most by this change. According to the Child Poverty Action Group, families with young children are more likely to be living in poverty. Most of the usage of these caddies will be by women. 49% of single parent families are headed by a female. Females are the main users of sanitary products. Twice as many women than men are incontinent. In fact, 39.9% of women in Wales are incontinent. This increase is totally acceptable. 
It is a tax which will be mostly paid by women, and I would be interested to see what the inequality impact assessment has to say on this matter. I'm also concerned about communication regarding the purple bag, which also needs to be addressed. This is not a hygiene collection connection, but an extension of the black bag collection. The purple bag is merely an indicator to the waste collection team that this household has been identified as needing an extra bag. I think there has been and continues to be a lot of confusion about this bag. I've had conflicting reports regarding this. We were told in a council meeting that there is no discouragement for people to apply for a purple bag. However, I've also been told that there is a discouragement for people to register for a purple bag, as this may mean that they are less inclined to recycle. Discouragement to have an extra waste collection bag is an understandable strategy for the council in its attempt to reach recycling targets. So while I understand the caution about allowing more household waste per household, I feel this needs to be balanced with openness to the residents. I would like to suggest that residents are encouraged to apply for a purple bag. This means they can be accurately assessed for need. And I would also like to suggest that a purple bag is not agreed unless an officer has visited and advised on waste management. I was interested to learn that officers visit and advise households, and this is to be commended. And I would like, thank you. Um, I would like to suggest that this visit could be expanded to include existing households who perhaps are abusing the system, for example, putting out multiple purple bags. One, one minute, please, councillor. No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've, I've made the points that I want to make. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Uh, councillor Johnson, please. Thank you, Meg. Would it be appropriate for councillor Wilson to come back? Because I think he's going to respond directly to comments from councillor Camp. If you're uh, willing to give way in terms of the order, uh, that I'm sure Councillor Wilson would rec would uh, welcome that. Councillor Wilson, do you want to come in at this point? I'm muting myself. Yes, I'm more than happy to. And yes, in relation to some of those questions, um, I'm Councillor Coop. One of the things that we are doing, we've obviously going to the free weekly, um, so every three weeks, Black Bears collected. Purple bags will also be every three weeks, as you probably are aware. And what we want to do is make people think about what they can recycle. And um, one of the things that we, we do want to encourage people is to recycle more. And that's part of the strategy. It's not just to save money, but actually to increase our participation, participation rate. And as you know, from April this year, that residents in Dennis Powers, Sully, Panath, uh, we'll be then going through what we call the blueprint, which a lot of authorities are doing. Um, so there will be separation and that will help as well to increase up our recycling target to over 70 percent. And that clearly that's what we want to do. But we are right. There, there are there are people there perhaps who have used it as an extra black bag. And that's not the intention. But we do acknowledge that there are big families around who may need one, but we also acknowledge that perhaps people perhaps need to know what they can and can't recycle. And yes, we do get officers that do come along and we will encourage that. But I can assure you there's no discouragement from people who generally need to use the purple bag scheme. Of course, we, you know, we want people um, to feel comfortable using the purple bag scheme, but we don't want to see it to be abused either. Um, and that's the point I would like to answer. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh uh, Councillor Cap, can I assume that's a legacy hand and, and if so, ask you to lower it, please. Uh, Councillor Johnson, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I'm disappointed you know, in regards to the previous amendment that Council didn't take the opportunity to uh, reduce the Council tax burden on, on residents. Um, I just to, to just to clarify, because I think some people try to take or perhaps deliberately take the wrong end of the stick. Um, the intention of using reserves as a smoothing measure is because I identified a number of different um, alternative methods where that funding would be provided. Uh, and I would like that in, I thought, um, quite great detail. Um, Referring, going back to the um, uh, some of the comments from Councillor Goodjohn, he talks. He mentioned the 
um, the council tax over a long period of time. I think it's difficult to compare different eras when the trends in terms of inflation was quite different in the late noughty, 90s and early noughties than it was in the in the teens, which is when uh, we've seen a substantial increase in council tax that's been well above inflation um, practically until um, today's proposal. Um, the settlement that we have here is uh, an increase of um, uh, around 9% from Welsh Government, it's the third highest in Wales and around £10 million more than anticipated. That's why a lot of the work that was done before Welsh Government's provision settlement in December was published was actually, I think, you know, quite um, you know, out of time almost because we had that fiscal event and lots of things which, which changed it. But um, it feels we've barely moved on in our discussions um, around uh, from when we were anticipating penury and massive cuts to services. This isn't a council in great financial difficulties. It's one which ended the last financial year with £128 million in usable reserves, increasing by £37 million over the two years during COVID. We anticipate £1.5 million extra council tax collection this year, £150,000 more in income investment and the restatement of £2 million in care housing costs. I am particularly disappointed with the consultation on the budget, or rather, I feel the, um, the way in which that consultation um, played out in terms of the final cabinet decision that we've received tonight. I feel that councillors and scrutiny have been disrespected. We had back to back for our meetings on vast elements of the budget. There were 773 responses to the consultation and that was dismissed in minutes within the cabinet meeting on the 27th of February that I attended. The Corporate Performance and Resources Committee highlighted just two of the many proposed changes in, in fees and charges, hygiene caddies and cafe licences, a cumulative cost to the council of around £20,000 dismissed completely by cabinet. If you're so keen on full cost recovery, which is the reason, rationale behind many of these increases, the public needs to see that we're using that money wisely. And just as there was a discussion about an open books discussion from uh, from the council with um, with uh, cafe owners, the same thing has to be done by the council. The people have to see that their money is being spent wisely. I, I found that the, the, the discussion about uh, which seemed to where the leaders seem to confuse turnover with profit in terms of the increase of uh, cafe license charges um, to be a little bit confusing and certainly in the wrong direction. Uh, there has been an opportunity, Mayor, to revisit these many other proposed small cuts with the addition of £178,000 in the final settlement from Welsh Government. Cuts to paper newspapers being available in our warm space libraries, cuts to sandbags for residents who feel threatened by flooding. Instead, the Vale Council chose to bank this money rather than use it for the public good, either in reversing those proposed cuts um, or in reducing the council tax. That's an opportunity missed, Mayor. The high-handed attitude is, again, one executive, no friends, I'm afraid. Now, I mean, we're still going to wait. There were 77, I think, charges that were being changed, and we're awaiting 33 equality impact assessments. Uh, Councillor Kalp has already raised the issue regarding hygiene caddies, which are particularly of impact to uh, women and those with low incomes. I don't understand why the council didn't go for, I don't know, charging five pounds rather than the current two pounds rather than full cost recovery. I don't understand why those options weren't discussed, weren't considered. I do hope that you look at the equality impact assessments when they take place and reconsider them. But for the time being, the Plank Only Group will be voting against this budget tonight. We don't believe it's doing um, people of their more than favours. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Marnie, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, listen to this. We hear the same sort of stuff every year. And uh, unfortunately, you're going to hear the same sort of stuff of, of me as well. I think it's a bit rich. It's always the Labour Party whining about Westminster, the shambles that the Conservative Party is in Westminster, which of course they're right. Point of order. Absolutely. Mayor, uh, there's no camera. Uh, can Councillor uh, Marnie, my, my uh, can I ask you to switch your camera uh, on, please? My apologies. Yeah, it's okay for you. Thank okay. you. Yeah, criticising, uh, oh, it's all Westminster government's fault. I mean, the Conservative government, national UK government, is a shambles. I'm sure many of us would agree on that. But you can't do that on the one hand and then not complain about the Labour-controlled Welsh Assembly government, because it's the same thing is true. If they're not giving us the money, start whining to them. Uh, over year after year, we hear that the Vale of Glamorgan um, is well down the list of uh, payments for the block grants per head in Wales to other councils in Wales. Well, we should be getting exactly the same as the highest one, as far as I'm concerned. So complain to the Welsh government for not giving us more money. By all means, whine about the, the Westminster shambles of a Tory government, but they'll point out, well, we don't get the income. They're borrowing billions every year, as you know, ever increasing amounts. 
Um, there's howls of protest of Labour po- politicians every time it's suggested we scrap the, the um, aid budget, which is billions and billions of pounds given away to other countries and natives of other countries, um, while our own people can't even heat their own houses. So stop whining about Westminster and start whining about the Welsh Assembly government. Um, especially we see some of the waste has been mentioned before, the 150 million wasted on uh, the planning of the M4 uh, extension, uh, which never happened. Um, how are you going to spend that sort of money on something that didn't happen is beyond me. I've just heard Mark Wilson refer to bin bag collection. That's another point that came up many years ago when the Vale signed a contract with, I think it was the, the incinerator in Tremorfa. Um the most bizarre situation possible, and I've just read this in, in notes I've read just, uh, just the other day, in fact, is that the more we recycle, which is a good thing, I'm sure we're all agreed, the less waste we produce, the less waste we can produce to the incinerator, which we've got a contract with, the more money we have to pay them if we fall short of the target. And that was highlighted in the report. Well, I mean, who on earth gets in a situation like that? Let's recycle, recycle, recycle. Fantastic. Oh, now we've got to pay more money, more money to the people we've got a contract to if we fall below the tonnage of waste bags we send to them. What a crazy, crazy situation. So I'll be voting uh, against this uh, increase yet again. I mean, people have uh, alluded to again this time, creating chief ex- uh, senior executive posts of 140000 plus a year out of thin air when we apparently haven't got any money. It's just a nonsense. I appreciate books have to be balanced, but... Uh, I'm not prepared to back the people who are balancing them, unfortunately. So uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you. So um, I I think we've had a a robust debate. Um, If there are any final comments, please, and then I will move us to a vote. Councillor Savignanum. Thank you, Chair. Just just a couple of quick points. Um, This budget is about political choices. It's about our choice to support some of the most vulnerable people in in the Vale, um, as well as trying to keep uh, our statutory services going. So this is what this budget is about, and that is a political choice, and that is a political choice that we have made um, in consultation with the people of the Vale of Gamorgan and with our colleagues, and that that has been scrutinised as uh, as we've seen. Um, And that means it's we're looking not just for this this year we're looking at the next year and the year after we're being we're being fiscally responsible going forward and being um, we're being strategic about that um chair i'd just like to um comment on councillor kaup's um uh comments about the um uh the equality of um the the, the bins and the, the purple bags i i completely accept her point that uh women often heading single households are uh will will uh face you know will will often face um uh the um you know the issue of, of of payment for these more than than other households, and I can assure her that is something that, as a cabinet, and certainly in, as part of my portfolio, I will be keeping uh, a, an eye on. And I, you know, I hope uh, what we will demonstrate is that we are a responsive cabinet, um, uh, particularly when it comes to equalities issues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. So um, we move now to the executive leader. Uh, to respond to the comments received on the budget proposals. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think a lot were just comments rather than queries or whatever, so I won't I won't go through all of it. Um, I, I agree with with um, Councillor Hooper. I mean, I think that this year actually we've we've got pretty close to zero based budgeting. I'd like to go t- towards gender budgeting as well, um, and and to actually look at the way in which our strategic leadership team and cabinet work together and the collegiate way in which they worked. I think also the way in which our schools have worked with us and the school budget forum and and constant head teacher meetings as well. There has been a, a very collaborative approach to getting to where we are. Could we do more? I think we probably could. But I think we're on the way and I but I think the next step is I would like to see an awful lot more constructive discussion in scrutiny committees 
because at the moment there is there is very little discussion in scrutiny committees. Um, Councillor Cowp, I co commenting in the, in the same way as as, as Councillor Sivignanum has. Um, it's interesting that that when stuff is, is not that huge in financial terms, we can, we can go into percentages. You know, we're talking we're talking eight pounds currently increase. Um, and yes, it's, it is a 400% increase. And we did look at it. We looked at it in quite some depth. And we looked at it and actually £10, 10 pounds isn't break even. Because you also have to look at storage, you also have to look at delivery. Um, and as I said before, this, this is not a mandatory requirement of, of, of putting out hygiene waste. If you've got a spare dustbin, you can use that and it will work exactly the same. Um, and you know they they are not mandatory. Um, and and the, que the the question really is you know this is a service we provide. We don't have to provide that service if you know. And and speaking as somebody that has found those those bins really useful, I, I suppose one thing I'd probably want to look at in the future is is the whole Vimes index concept um, as a sort of a um, a Discworld um, fan, um, and and the, the Vimes index, which basically says if you can afford to buy something, at, you know, that's of good quality at an increased cost, it'll probably last you longer. And then somebody that's on lower income ends up paying more and more. Now, I I would like to have a conversation uh, about how how we help people to to combat that that challenge that they face. People that people on, on low incomes do challenge and and you know maybe that's something that we need to look at in in the future in terms of departmental innovation i mean it took us four years to turn around big fresh and we look at the actual outcomes we're getting from that i want to see more of that i think we all want to see more of that but it took four years now we can we can we can um hopefully turn things around in terms of the reshaping agenda faster now because there's a lot of lessons learned and there's there's a bit of sort of painting by numbers that we can do with that but we will be looking at innovation and our officers are very much up for that and come forward with their their own ideas um when we change terminology and we use things like we've got x million of usable reserves well, the only usable, which are not earmarked or restricted, that we've got is a general fund. That's 11 million. And we've already said that that should be between three and five percent of our overall budget, which it is. Um, and I think I think the only comment I'll make on Councillor Marnie's contribution is that actually local government in Wales has been protected by Welsh Government. And it might be worthwhile making a comparison with what's going on in England, where it's a very, very different picture. And talking to colleagues over there, I, I really wouldn't want to be in their situation. We we have been projected. There's an awful lot of data if you have a look on the um, LGA site, the Local Government Association site for England, and, it, and it, you, they're actually reports year by year, and you can have a look at, at the, 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 the situation that they find themselves in. Um, and I do have to say, and particularly this year, when Welsh Government funded us at 1% at overall above what, what they received um, in consequentials from England, um, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I'm Welsh and I'm very happy to be in Wales. Um, thank you, Mayor. I'll finish there. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, councillors. So um, I'm going to move us now to vote on the recommendations that are before us. I've reminded you of them several times, so I'm not going to do that again. Uh, Chief Executive, could I ask you to take us through a vote on the recommendations, please? Thank you, Mayor. So on this occasion, we're voting either for the recommendations in your papers or against or abstaining. So I will start with Councillor Anne Asprey, please. Against. Councillor Julia, Julie Aviat? For. Councillor Gareth Ball? For. Councillor Rhiannon Birch? For. Councillor Bronwyn Brooks? For the recommendations.
Chancellor Gillian Bruce. Against. Councillor Ian Buckley. For. Councillor Liz Burnett. For. Councillor Samantha Campbell. Against. Councillor George Carroll. Against. Councillor Christine Cave. Against. Councillor Charles Champion. Against. Councillor Janice Charles. Against. Councillor Millie Collins. Against. Councillor Marianne Kaup. Against. Councillor Pamela Drake. For the recommendations. Councillor Vince Driscoll. Against. Councillor Anthony Ernest. Against. Councillor Robert Fisher. Against. Councillor Chris Franks. Against. Councillor Wendy Gilligan. For the recommendation. Councillor Emma Goodjohn. Councillor Emma Goodjohn, please. Okay, I'll return. Councillor Ewan Goodjohn. For the budget. Councillor Stephen Haynes. Against. Councillor Howard Hamilton. For the budget. Councillor Sally Hanks. For the recommendation. Councillor William Hennessy. Against the recommendation. Councillor Nick Hodges. Against. Councillor Mark Hooper. Against. Councillor Catherine Iannucci. For. Councillor Gwyn John. For. Councillor Ian Johnson. And Erwin against. Councillor Susan Lloyd Selby. For. Councillor Belinda Lovelock Edwards. For. Councillor Julie Lynch Wilson. For. Councillor Kevin Marnie. Against. Councillor Naomi Marshallsea. For. Councillor Michael Morgan. For. Councillor Jane Norman. For the recommendation. Councillor Helen Payne. For the budget recommendations. Councillor Elliot Penn. For the budget recommendations. Councillor Sandra Perks. For the recommendation. Councillor Ian Perry. For the recommendation. Councillor Joanna Prithro. For the recommendation. Councillor Ruba Sivanianam. For. Councillor Caris Dallard. For Blyde. Councillor Neil Thomas. Against. Sorry, I apologise for I, for the recommendation. Sorry, I was distracted by by a, a dog that's just come into the office. Uh, no, I, I, I am for the recommendation. I apologise. Councillor Rhys Thomas. Mm -hmm. Against. Councillor Stefan William. Unerbin. Councillor Eddie Williams. For the recommendation. Councillor Mark Wilson. For the recommendations. And Councillor Nicholas Wood. Against. And I'm just going to go back to check if Councillor Emma Goodjohn can hear me now. Yes, I can. Thank you for the recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. So I make that and I'd appreciate if somebody can double check this. Um, 22 against 34. Yeah, I agree. And no abstentions. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Thank and you. I heard the monitoring officer say that she agrees as well. So the recommendations uh, arising from the budget report and the increase in council tax are approved. Thank you, Councillor. Um, uh, Leader, can I just check, is that a legacy hand? It is indeed. Uh, thank, you. You. thank you. So um, the next recommendation, 9G, relates to the pay policy. And I'm conscious that there are a number of officers and uh, councillors who need to leave the meeting at this point. So this feels like a good time for us to take a short break. What I'm going to suggest is that we take a 10 minute break. Um, those of you who are having to leave the meeting entirely, please leave the meeting and wait to be called back in. 
The rest of us will rejoin at 20 past nine. Please do not leave the meeting. Please switch your camera and your microphone off. Thank you.
questions for all councillors to rejoin. Thank you. Um, so we move to agenda item 9G, the pay policy. Can I ask officers to confirm that those councillors who've declared a personal and prejudicial interest have left the meeting, please? Chair, I can confirm that's correct. They have left. Thank you. And uh, relevant officers. Tracy, I believe you're staying with us in case we need advice, but uh, you'll leave prior to the vote. Thank you. Uh, so, um, as, as I've already said, agenda item 9G pay policy for 2023-24. This report is for approval. Um, executive leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. I'm afraid I'm juggling between two computers on this one. So, um, as, as members would know from previous years, the, the Council has a statutory requirement under the Localism Act to prepare a pay policy statement for the new financial year 2023-24. Um, and the statement needs to be approved and published by the 31st of March. Um, it provides a, a framework for ensuring that employees are rewarded fairly and objectively. Um, and, and obviously that's got to be in accordance with the service needs of the council and that there's openness and transparency in relation to the um, process. Um, the report um, was sent, referred from cabinet to corporate performance and resources scrutiny. Um, and, and that was on the 15th of February um, where the report was noted. Um, and I think, as, as I mentioned at, at Cabinet, if you look at Section 12 of, of Appendix A, I think it's, it's quite um, interesting that, that the differential between the top and bottom of the organisation is actually quite flat. And, that, and that, that's a, a positive thing to, to not have sort of chief execs that have got are having sort of 30 times the salary of, of the, the lowest grades, that sort of thing. It is quite a, um, a, a flat structure. And then also that we have um, made progress in terms of the gender pay gap. So the council, the council, uh, so cabinet referred it to corporate resources scrutiny and said, and and, and that um, also referred it on to the council for approval um, before it's today. Um, and I said it's a fairly straightforward um, report that is is required. And so um, I would um, recommend approval of this of this. Pay policy um, to council today. Um, and I move. And I'll second that, Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, I see no hands. So Mayor, I. Mayor, before we go, can Tracy leave, please? Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the reminder. It's OK. Can you just confirm when she's gone? She's gone. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, I see no hands, therefore I assume. No debate, and therefore the recommendation is approved. Thank you. And before we move on to the next item, um, can I ask officers to invite the relevant uh, officers and councillors back into the meeting, please? No, I think officers have to stay out, don't they? They, they do. It's yeah. just Trace, Tracy who will come back in and all officers will stay out for this. Yeah, Tracy and Councillor Champion, Councillor Bruce and Councillor Ernest can come back in. Just waiting for confirmation, thank you.
Thank you. I can see all the councillors have rejoined us. Uh, thank you for your patience. So we move on to agenda item 9H, Chief Officer Appraisal Scheme Proposed Modifications. This report is for approval. Executive Leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, this was actually um, a reference from Corporate Performance and Resources Scrutiny Committee to Cabinet, and then it's um, been forwarded on to, to Council for um, approval. Um, the current Chief Officer appraisal process has actually been um, in place since 2012. Um, with only minor adjustments and the proposed changes to the Chief Officer Appraisal Scheme um, before you today um, were considered initially by the Strategic Leadership Team or Senior Leadership Team on 15th of November 2022. Trade unions and diversity networks were briefed in November and heads of service were initially briefed on the proposed changes in January 2023. Um, and it, it's looking to also include um, you know, smart objectives and targets, reflect um, a competency profile, um, moving more towards coaching conversations base, based on sort of strength based improvements. So encouraging people on the way forward um, and in, encouraging a rounded view of performance through peer review and 360 degree feedback which is a much more constructive way of, of um, undertaking appraisals um there was actually a, a, a quite a detailed discussion in um, corporate performance and resources um and i i enjoyed watching that um and I, I know that you know there there were some people that sort of said, well, you know, are there risks of you know this or that, or people being reviewed by their peers, and and actually that's the whole point of a three sixty degree um, appraisal is that you get reviewed from people above you, below you, and to the sides of you, and that's what actually makes it very constructive, and and they are very constructive conversations. Um, there were also um, comments about. You know, it's sort of a greater number, and I think the phrase was touch points and 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 reflection and more frequent appraisals, so that you don't get to an end of a year and suddenly be confronted by, you know, an appraisal that you you don't recognise. So it was seen as a as a, a very um, positive and and, and um, constructive way forward, um, and so that so they referred it to cabinet. Uh, that we discussed in February um, prior to um, approved by council today so that it could be introduced from the 1st of April 2023. Um, so um, it's been referred to council by cabinet um, for endorsement and approval by council um, so it can be introduced by the 1st of April 2023 um, and on that note um, actually I'm just trying to double check yeah on that note I would um, I would move Thank and you. I'll second that thank you very much councillors uh, councillor Stephen Haynes please oh my, my camera didn't all oh, right oh, there I am <laughs> There you go. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Leader, for, for clearing most of the points. And uh, while I, I do support this uh, move in principle, there is some comments that I, I think need to be re-brought up, uh, mainly regarding the Council's um, basically definition of productivity. And to paraphrase it, the authority needs a, a clearer understanding of productivity and the techniques to increase it within the workplace. At present, productivity of an individual is only ever measured on an annual review, and I should imagine this will move on to this new system on as a uh, touch point review, but it's not just about review. The productivity is an ongoing thing and it's the easiest way to save money and increase the performance of officers. So I, I just like to remind the uh, the the council, the full council that uh, productivity productivity is important and perhaps it should have been included in this. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Councillor. I see no other uh, hands raised in relation to this matter. So, um, thank you. Tracy, would you like to leave? So many comings and goings, it's hard to take account of who needs to be here when. So, thank you to uh, the officers for keeping me on top of that. So, I see uh, no other hands, therefore I assume there's no dissent and uh, the recommendation is approved accordingly. So uh, can we now invite uh, officers to rejoin the meeting, please? Thank you, councillors, again for your patience, uh, just waiting for officers to return. So we move to agenda item 10, which is council tax resolution. Uh, executive leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, this is, this is again, this is an annual report that we, we take um, every year in the budget setting meeting. Um, and this um, sets out the, um, the amounts of council tax for each um, area of the Vale community, you know, towns, etc. Um, and that is, is set out in terms of, um, first of all, the base council tax rise for us, then the precept for the town and community councils and the precept for the police and, and crime commissioner um, and pretty well laid out. There are seven recommendations to this report. I need to mention that on recommendation seven, um, it says the, that notices of the making of the said council taxes signed by the managing director, and I won't go on to the rest of it, um, that needs to be changed obviously to chief executive. Um, it was obviously not caught in the uh, proofreading. Um, but apart from that, it's a, it's a straightforward report. And so I would move recommendations one to seven. That's a good call. And I'll second those recommendations, Mayor. Thank you. And just to clarify, those are the recommendations in the supplementary report that uh, councillors have received. Yeah. Thank you. I see no hands, so I assume no dissent, and therefore uh, those uh, that resolution is agreed. Thank you, Councillor. No, nope. Councillor Carroll. No, I um, dissent on that. I would um, request a vote. Uh, Councillor Carroll, I, I think we've just uh, given an opportunity for council councillors to make comment. And I, I saw no hands, so I already uh, made the decision. I pressed the button. You press, you're telling me you pressed the button and your hand didn't come up? Yes. Right. OK, well, I'm prepared to allow a degree of flexibility on this. So can you just clarify for me exactly what your point is again, please? Um, I was requesting a recorded vote on the council tax. Right, so I'm just checking to see if we have the the required number of hands on that. And we do. So we will move to a recorded vote. Uh, can I ask the Chief Executive to take us through that recorded vote, please? So, uh, councillors, again, um, if you are for the recommendations that appear in the paper, um, please indicate or if you're against or abstaining. So I'm going to start with Councillor Anne Asprey, please. Against. Councillor Julie Aviat. For. Councillor Gareth Ball. For. Councillor Rhiannon Birch. For. Councillor Bronwyn Brooks. For. Councillor Gillian Bruce. Against. Councillor Ian Buckley. Councillor Buckley. Oh. 
Councillor Liz Burnett. Four. Councillor Samantha Campbell. Against. Councillor George Carroll. Against. Councillor Christine Cave. Against. Councillor mm -hmm. Charles Champion. Against. Councillor Janice Charles. Against. Councillor Millie Collins. Against. Councillor Marianne Kaup. Against. Councillor Pamela Drake. For. Councillor Vince Driscoll. Against. Councillor Anthony Ernest. Against. Councillor Robert Fisher. Against. Councillor Chris Franks. Against. Councillor Wendy Gilligan. For the recommendation. Councillor Emma Goodjohn. For. Councillor Ewan Goodjohn. For. Councillor Stephen Haynes. Against. Councillor Howard Hamilton. For. Councillor Sally Hanks. For. Councillor William Hennessy. Against. Councillor Nick Hodges. Against. Councillor Mark Hooper. Against. Councillor Catherine Yanucci. For. Councillor Gwyn John. For. Councillor Ian Johnson. Uh, and Erwin against. Councillor Susan Lloyd Selby. For. Councillor Belinda Lovelock Edwards. For. Councillor Julie Lynch Wilson. For. Councillor Kevin Marney. Councillor Naomi Marshallsey. Obliged for. Councillor Michael Morgan. For. Councillor Jane Norman. For the recommendation. Councillor Helen Payne. For the recommendation. Councillor Elliot Penn. For the recommendation. Councillor Sandra Perks. For the recommendation. Councillor Ian Perry. For. Councillor Joanna Prithero. For the recommendation. Councillor Ruba Sivanyanam. For. Councillor Karis Dallard. Complied. Councillor Neil Thomas. For. Councillor Rhys Thomas. Against. Councillor Stefan William. Unerbin. Councillor Eddie Williams. For. Councillor Mark Wilson. For. Councillor Nicholas Wood. Against. Thank you. Uh, may I make that uh, 30 for the recommendation, 22 against and no abstentions. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Perry, you have your hand raised. Oh, do I? You did. Sorry. That's fine. You, you've removed it. You've, you've taken it down. That's fine. Thank you very much. Oh, it's back up again. Thank you very much. It's, it's Sorry, down. It's back that, there. That, that's fine. Thank you, Councillor Perry. So we move on to... Um, Agenda item 11 to inform the Council of the use of the urgent decision procedure under Article 1515 of the Constitution. This report is for noting. Uh, Executive Leader, please. Thank you, Mayor. As you said, these are um, items for noting, and so I would um, move um, agenda items um, 11A to H on block. And I'll second those, Lee, uh, Mayor. Thank you. And I see no hands, therefore I assume no dissent and those recommendations are uh, duly noted. Uh, thank you, councillors. Moving on to agenda item 12, to receive questions and answers pursuant to section 4.19.2 to 4.19.7 of the council's constitution. Um, there are 17 questions from councillors before us tonight. Once councillors have heard the response to their question, uh, please indicate in the usual way if you want to ask a supplementary or um, I will move on. 
And can I respectfully remind councillors that any supplementary question must arise out of your original question or the reply given, um, or I won't allow it. And multiple questions, speeches and statements are not allowed. Um, and I will um, interrupt you if that proves to be the case. So question one from Councillor Hennessy to the Cabinet Member for Community Engagement, Equalities and Regulatory Services regarding model farm development. Councillor Sivignanum, please. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Hennessy, for your question. Um, the current planning application for model farm was deliberated by the planning committee on the 1st of March um, when a full assessment of the development of the development against both national and local policies and all other material issues were considered. Um, as Councillor Hennessy will be aware, the council's current local development plan does not expire until uh, 2026 and so therefore remains a key material consideration in the determination of this application. And just as a final remark, um, the application has been made subject to a holding direction from Welsh Government which uh, which restricts the grant of permission until Welsh Government decide whether the application should be referred to Welsh Ministers for their final decision. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we move on to uh, question two from Councillor Perry to the Executive Leader and Cabinet Member for Performance and Resources regarding representation on Cabinet. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the simple fact is on this question that the current electoral system is not based on proportional representation and the voice of the Vale of Glamorgan electorate spoke at the May 2022 local government elections delivering 25 Labour seats. Llantwit First Independence again took four seats to represent Llantwit Major. Um, is this not a de democratic outcome? You Councillor Perry were elected under the very same arrangements. As the largest political group following those elections, the Labour group entered into discussions with the Llantwit Major First Independence and the, also the independent member, Councillor Morgan, and agreed to enter into a joint coalition to form an administration and to lead the council as it was rightly entitled to do. The Local Government Act 2000 introduced executive or cabinet arrangements and, as C Councillor Perry would, will recall, at the annual meeting last year, following those May 2022 local government elections, the relevant report detailed the Council's constitutional requirements to appoint a leader and deputy leader and establish a cabinet. The current cabinet, as in previous Labour-led administrations, has been and is one of the most diverse and inclusive in local government in Wales. You refer to collaboration and working together in your question, yet you fail to acknowledge that the current and previous Labour-led coalition has been and will continue to be very collaborative in its deliberations and will continue to work together and in partnership with a range of other organisations and agencies to deliver vital council services to its residents and communities. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, next question from Councillor Perry to the Executive Leader regarding reshaping services. Councillor Burnett. Thank you, Mayor. Um, firstly, um, reshaping and our approach to transformation has never been in the gutter. Um, you know, as, as you refer to it, and to suggest this is in ignorance of some of the significant transformation undertaken within this, the council in the way services are delivered. I'm aware that you're shortly going to be meeting with the chief exec and director of corporate resources in your community council um, to to discuss potential opportunities to work closer together. These are meetings that we've had with many areas. This demonstrates that the council's appetite continues to be to work with our communities, our organisations and town and community councils on new ways of providing services. You will recall that reshaping services as a programme was introduced at a time of financial austerity and in, in its initial phases delivered millions of pounds of savings whilst protecting key services. 
The programme developed during the pandemic to place greater emphasis on new ways of working and in particular to support people in food po poverty, for staff to adopt new ways of working and making connections with key partnership work. As we've discussed tonight, the budget for the coming years will be incredibly tight um, and it will require a very tightly managed savings programme. However, we've also seen in the annual delivery plan for the coming year that there is a continued willingness and intention to be ambitious about delivering for residents of the Vale, and we will do this in creative ways. We'll also work in partnership with a range of organisations. I look forward to hearing from colleagues how your meeting progresses, and I would again extend the offer to all town and community councils to approach the council with any ideas they may have. Thank you, May. Uh, thank you. Uh, question four from Councillor Perry to the Cabinet Member for Community Engagement, Equalities and Regulatory Services regarding the Placemaking Wales Charter. Councillor Sivin Yarnan, please. Right. Uh, May, sorry if I could just interrupt. Um, we, we've had a message say she, she's lost connection, so she's trying to get back in at the moment. I think thank I'm back for, now. Oh, that, you're back. Good. Okay. Otherwise, we, thank, we could have come back. For that. Think, thank you. Welcome back, Councillor. Uh, so just uh, in, the in case. The time, it seems. <laughs> yeah, so question four uh, regarding the placemaking Wales Charter. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you, um, Councillor Perry. Um, it is proposed that, the sub, uh, that uh, subject to cabinet approval that the Vale of Glamorgan Council will be seeking to sign up to the Charter and this will see placemaking plans created for each of our four towns in the Vale. The Council has been working with Welsh Government uh, uh, in developing its placemaking agenda and in fact took part in the Design Commission for Wales work in establishing the Charter uh, in the first place. Uh, the waterfront development was included within the De Design Commission for Wales's placemaking guide um, as, a, as a good example of, of mixed use development. Um, and the Council has continued to work with Welsh Government um, and has linked their Transforming Town Towns Grant and Loan Funding Programme to the development of placemaking plans. Uh, work on the um, and in fact work on the placemaking plan for Barry has already started and it is planned to hold um, engagement events in the spring which will feed into the plans development um, and this engagement will involve stakeholders including both the community and local businesses. Thank you Chair. Thank you Councillor. Um, next question, uh, question five from Councillor Perry to the Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood and Building Services regarding the use of UPVC alternatives on council properties. Councillor Wilson, please. OK, thank you for your question, Councillor Perry. And this is my reply. Teams across the council are investigating options for more environmentally window solutions for building projects generally. However, the use of such alternatives does come with cost implications. From both a capital installation and revenue future maintenance perspective, UPVC is significantly more cost effective over the life of a product in terms of future, before, future maintenance costs and is usually the most cost effective choice from a capital perspective, especially where resources are limited for such projects. In instances where there is a site specific justification for different material, for example, where there are heritage implications, consideration will be given to use of other materials as required. However, Sustainable Communities for Learning programme has delivered three comprehensive schools, two primary schools, one net zero carbon operation and one all electric, and a primary unit and modern method construct delivery, none of which includes UPVC window stroke doors. The key delivery for the programme is to provide sustainable, low environmental impact, firmly efficient buildings, which is achieved through the selection of the current products and working methods of construction. The council tries to evolve its practices in terms of environmental impact by procuring the most sustainable building materials available, but also balancing this within the constraints of available budgets. This matter 
will be highlighted at the Council Budget Zero Board for future discussion and consideration also. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, question six from Councillor Perry to Councillor Wilson again, please, uh, regarding maintenance backlog for social rented properties. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Thank you very much, Councillor Perry, for your question. Our account response times for repairs are achieved in the main, though there are some non-urgent repairs being batched to make best use of resources available. For information, the response times are as follows. Emergency repairs, 24 hours. Urgent repairs, five working days. Routine repairs, 37 days, 37 working days. And batch repairs, six months. At present, the service is working to the shovel response times. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, next question from Councillor Perry to the Cabinet Member of Public Sector Housing and Tenant Engagement regarding tenant engagement for council tenants. And as Councillor Wilkinson uh, isn't with us this evening, um, can I ask the executive leader to respond, please? Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillor Perry. Um, the Council has a, a tenant and leaseholder participation st strategy, which sets out key objectives and actions designed to drive further tenant engagement in housing and building services. There are a number of ways tenants can get involved, including via tenants and residents or, or associations, and, and I attend a very successful one in, in, in my ward. Um, the Quality Design Forum, which is a group of tenants who are consulted on capital improvements, and the Working Group, who meet with senior officers and discuss a range of tenancy-related services. As well as these groups, the Service Quality Assessors are a new group of tenants who carry out reviews and mystery shopping um, type exercises. And in addition, a small group of tenants are represented on the, the Homes and Safe Community Scrutiny Committee, um, and, and they, they definitely um, input their, their views. In further support of our desire to ensure that tenants live in well-maintained homes, tenant liaison officers are employed within building services team um, and play a key, key role in delivering capital improvements. Their role includes consultation with tenants before, during and after work, acting as a conduit between the tenant and contractors to ensure that works are completed to a high standard on time and with minimal disruption to the tenant. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, question eight from Councillor Perry regarding potholes. Uh, Councillor Wilson, please. Thank you very much for your, for your question, Councillor Perry. This is my reply. We have a clear definition as to what constitutes a pothole. We have regular reviews of our road system and inspection and intervention policy. As a result, there is no need for redefinition to Council. Councillor Perry, do you have a, a supplementary? Yeah, in some areas, I just have a patchwork of pothole repairs, which create a very rough and even noisy surface. Um, should we be looking at resurfacing those areas more quickly than we currently are, rather than continuing to keep patching them over and over again and adding to the patchwork, which doesn't create a very good surface? Thank you very much for your supplementary um, question, Councillor Perry. Um, if if we had a, 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 a considerable amount of money, then the answer is yes. Of course, I'd like to resurface a lot more roads than we can. But this is why we do have a policy in relation to potholes. And I would like to also say that if you've got any roads in particular that you think that aren't very much needed, we can get our assessors around and assess them according to a credit score criteria. But as you're aware, like all of us, we're all binded by a budget and obviously we've got to work within that budget. So thank you very much for your supplementary question. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Perry. Uh, can I assume that's a legacy hand? If so, could you lower it, please? Still raised? Still right. Oh, it's just very slow, sorry. Still raised. Thank you. 
Uh, question nine from Councillor Perry for Councillor Wilson regarding road noise and highway resurfacing plans. Councillor Wilson, please. Thank you very much for your question, Councillor Perry. I am aware that you have previously been advised that within the Welsh Government Noise and Soundscape Action Plan 2018 to 23, to 2023, there is no explicit legal requirement on local authorities to implement or prioritise resurfacing work solely to reduce road noise. However, I accept that noise is a factor in well-being, and as such, I'm happy to confirm that any resurfacing work which are identified by the Council Housing Maintenance for year Plan will specify the use of appropriate materials in order to minimise potential impact of road noise and local communities and to assist us continue to meet the Council's duty and the well-being of future generations Wales Act. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor Perry, do you have a supplementary? Yeah, so in, in future years, will we look at uh, raising the um, resurfacing budget, which has, of course, been cut this year? Yes, I'm going to respond to that. Obviously, that is a matter between ourselves as a cabinet to make decisions, given the resources that we have. But I would love to also increase the, the budget for resurfacing, as we all would. But we've got to face the economic realities that we are facing. So thank you. Thank you. Question 10 from Councillor Perry to the Cabinet Member for Community Engagement Equalities and Regulatory Services regarding public open space in the rural vale. Councillor Sivignanen, please. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Perry. Um, I can, assure, I, I can uh, reassure Councillor Perry that as we move forward uh, with the review of the LDP, we will, we will continue to assess open space requirements for all our communities. The assessment of open space provision was, under, was undertaken as part of the background work to the preparation of both the current local development plan and the forthcoming replacement local development plan. Council will then further uh, will be further assessing levels of open space as part of the, the placement LDP green infrastructure assessment and this will form part of the green infrastructure appraisal back background paper for the deposit plan and as a member of the planning committee he will also know that with every individual planning application a report will balance the need for the development against any loss of open space if that is what is being considered and alongside this of course we've got housing allocations development management policies and the council's planning obligations um, which sets robust standards for levels of open space to be delivered as part of any new developments thank you chair thank you councillor councillor Perry, I'm not sure if that's a legacy hand or if you have a supplementary. You've you've lowered your hand. Thank you. So we will move on to question 11, which is from Councillor Perry for Councillor Sivignanum regarding St Nicholas Church in Wales School. Thank you, Chair, and um, thank you again, Councillor Perry. Um, Despite Councillor Perry's insinuations, to, to the contrary, a great deal of time and thought has gone into the St Nicholas application and decision, which sought to balance the competing material considerations as set out in the proposals for the new school and the associated planning committee report. As Councillor Perry is fully aware, the original planning application for a new school was submitted in July 2020, and this was refused at planning committee in January 2021. Further to that determination, a significant amount of time was spent engaging with consultees, including the council's own highways officers, um, to design a scheme which was considered uh, which was considered to deal with the reason for the original refusal. The subsequent planning, um, the, the subsequent application, sorry, was not submitted until January. Uh, last year, 2022, and was determined by the planning committee in April 2022. I, be I believe uh, very strongly that this demonstrates the level of time and work that went into designing a scheme, which as far as possible overcame the local and consulta consultee concerns while still meeting the educational needs. To reflect some of the concerns expressed during the consultation, specific, specifically in relation to parents continually parking within the village, 
the number of parking spaces allocated for this size and type of building was expanded. The inclusion of the parent drop off is not typically included in building programmes such as this. However, it was included in this programme in response to the community concerns to mitigate impact. Similarly, um, a hedge line has been maintained along the new grant uh, along the new um, uh, the new grass the, the new gra grass and plants and the inclusion of new trees within the parking area um, and I think I I I did um, uh, give a similar answer to a question that uh, Councillor Perry previously put uh, uh, to me in the last full council meeting um, in December um, and these new trees were included and considered as part of the planning application to reflect that this area falls within conservation boundaries. The park, the car park itself is permeable and has been designed to contribute uh, to the SAB compliant draining solution for the site. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, question 12 from Councillor Perry for Councillor Sivignanum again regarding the green at Bombleston. Thank you, Councillor Sivignanum. I would refer Councillor to my answer to him at full council on the 5th of December. As the council is fully aware, the claim of a village green on the land in question failed after after the relevant public inquiry inquiry and was not relevant to the consideration of this planning application. The planning committee report, which dealt with the provision of much needed council, council housing on the site, did, did not infer that the community council would be incapable of maintaining the land, but rather it considers the potential impacts if nothing were done with the land, should it be left undeveloped. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Perry. Yeah, I, I I don't see what relevance the village green application has to, to the, the question asked. I don't believe the question has been answered again. And Councillor Perry, you you've had your answer. Do you have a supplementary? Not, no. Uh, I if you have any, if you have any further issues, an Councillor Perry, if I may, uh, if you have any further issues, can I suggest you raise them um, outside of this meeting? Thank you. We move on to question 13, which is from Councillor Ernest to the Executive Leader regarding visits to Plymouth Ward in Penarth. Councillor Burnett, please. before we do that, Councillor Perry, could you lower your hand, please? Is he still showing up at your end? Yes, it is. Because I can see other people with hands up. My hand's showing down on here, so I'm showing down, but other people are showing up, so maybe there's a technical issue somewhere. In in that case, Councillor Perry, yeah, your hand is down now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we'll come back to question 13 for the Executive Leader regarding visits to Plymouth Ward in Penarth. Thank you, Executive Leader. Thank you, Mayor, and, and thank you, uh, Councillor Ernest. I, I make no apologies for regular for regularly visiting many areas of the Vale of Glamorgan as leader and for also regularly meeting with Welsh Government Ministers on issues of mutual interest. And that's wherever those meetings take place and either at my or their invitation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So we move on to question 14 from Councillor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor. I had no supplementary to answer. No, there, there's no need. Thank you, but there's 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 no thank need uh, to explain that. If your hand isn't raised, then I will always assume you don't have a supplementary and I will move on. But thank you. Question 14 from Councillor Johnson. Uh, for the Cabinet Member for Public Sector Housing and Tenant Engagement regarding support for existing and future refugees and asylum seekers in the county. And uh, the Executive Leader will take this question. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Johnson. The Council employs um, specialist support workers to provide essential support to refugees moving into the Vale of Glamorgan. This support is person centred, so staff can support refugees to access meaningful opportunities within their communities. These opportunities and a focus on nurturing support networks wherever possible, um, for example, through our Arts for Wellbeing course um, and others, um, are recognised as vital to successful integration. 
information is shared about specific advocacy forums for refugees and asylum seekers to ensure their voices are heard locally um, and, and with decision makers on the issues and experiences that, that they face. A crucial aspect of our support is supporting those newly arrived to understand local and wider systems um, and processes, of course, so they have a sense of control and understanding of the community, local authority or country they've arrived into. Language support is used in person wherever possible to ensure communication is meaningful and effective. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, next question, uh, 15 from Councillor Johnson to the Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Sustainable Places regarding promotion of fair trade. Councillor Brooks, please. OK, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Um, the, the Council is aware of the good work that goes on across the county by town and community councils to support fair trade. And I'd like to thank them for what is being done. Um, I think there is a huge amount of work and uh, as, as you are aware, uh, I, I attended one um, at the Barry Town Council last Friday uh, for a fair trade coffee morning um, at, at which you spoke and it was very interesting to hear the work that, that we're actually doing on the Town Council as, as yourself as Chair of Fair Trade. So during Fair Trade Fortnight, which uh, in case anyone is not aware, runs from 27th of February to the 12th of March this year, the council is sharing information on its social media, and we've also produced information for staff. Um, there are important considerations for us all in the choices we make, including the food we buy, and this is consistent with our commitments in the Project Zero Challenge Plan. Um, so thank you, uh, thank you, Ian, for highlighting this important cause, and it's something I fully support. Councillor Johnson, and um, before um, I bring you in, Councillor Johnson, uh, Councillor Hodges, could I could I ask you to switch your camera off, please? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson, please. Uh, thank you very much for that that response, Councillor Brooks. Um, in terms of promotion of um, fair trade foods within the council, I was wondering if it's appropriate for um, the council to use its purchasing power or um, to use its its networks, for example, Big Fresh, to um, to promote and use fair trade um, product produce where possible. Is there a mechanism for establishing that? Thank you very much. Um, off the top of my head, I can't give you a full response to that, but actually something very happy to explore. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, question 16 from Councillor Hooper to the Deputy Leader regarding replacement of urban street trees. Councillor Brooks, please. OK, thank you, Meg. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hooper. As you are no doubt aware, um, our parks officers are responsible for the day to day maintenance of urban trees on the adopted highway and in parks and public open spaces. Trees are maintained to ensure that any risk to public vehicles, transport infrastructure or property is as low as reasonably practicable. When trees are lost or removed from the highway, it would it would be unlikely that they would be replaced within the same street due to various highway constraints. But every effort will be made to replace losses on a two or a, on a two for one basis somewhere within the local environment and as close to that area as possible. If you have got a specific tree or trees you want to uh, like us to look at or discuss further, then perhaps you could contact me directly uh, and we can look into it from there. Thank you. Councillor Hooper, do you have a supplementary question? Thanks, Councillor Brooks, for that. Um, we, there's two trees that have lost on Romney Road and Birch Grove that have been brought to my attention. And one of the concerns I've got is whether how this is lacking association with our Project Zero commitments. Urban trees not only do the things that trees do and take carbon out of the atmosphere. Uh, Councillor Hooper, I'm sorry, I must ask you, um, I'll remind you of, of my earlier comment that we're not looking this is, for this statements. Not if you could, if you could a, council, making, sorry, Councillor Hooper, if you could let me just finish. If you could get to your question, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. I'm asking a question. Um, is the the reason there's a difference between what you're doing on the Project Zero and trees. These trees also provide, they take heat out of a local area. So urban trees are really important. Is there 
Is this an issue of the budget overtaking the policy? No. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. So uh, final question from Councillor Hooper to the Deputy Leader regarding strategies to mitigate against flood risk. Councillor Brooks, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hooper. Um, a number of different organisations have key roles and responsibilities relating to the management of flood and coastal risk in Wales. The National Strategy for Flood um, and Coastal Risk Management in Wales, which is from Welsh Government October 2020, provides a detailed summary of these roles and responsibilities, which vary according to the source of flooding. Natural Resources Wales, NRW, has a strategic oversight role for all flood and coastal erosion risk management matters in Wales. And whilst NRW, all local authorities, DCWW, and Welsh Government act as risk management authorities with more specific functions relating to the management of different flood risks. Given the nature of the question, um, I would really like to do the question justice because it's it's there's a lot of detail around that. Um, so with your permission, what I'm proposing is actually right to you to set out in detail the response to the question. Um, otherwise, I'm just trying to summarise that position. So really, I think it needs a more much more in depth uh, response to that. So I'm asking your permission if you're happy for me to write to you on that. Thanks, Brian. Absolutely. I would appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Um, okay. the, the, can I ask that the question relates to considers the um, planning application that's done by um, the incinerator said they're not in a flood risk area where the council said they are in a flood risk area. I'd like to know the difference between those two. Thank you, Bronwyn. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, councillors. So we move on to item 13 on the agenda. Um, Councillor Hooper, if you could lower your hand, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Um, item 13 on the agenda, questions from members of the public. 19 questions have been received and for members of the public who may be joining us tonight or watching this recording, as with the previous agenda item, I'll paraphrase the questions that you have sent to council. Uh, but please be assured that councillors have the full questions before them and will be responding on that basis. So question one from Mr Curtis to the executive leader regarding low carbon advertising and sponsoring policy. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Council uh, thank you, Mr Curtis. Um, I'm happy to confirm that the Council will consider this as part of the work that is currently underway to look at adopting a healthier advertising clause um, in the Council's advertising and sponsorship uh, protocol that would restrict the advertising of products that are high in fat, sugar and salt um, on Council owned or operated land. Um, and 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 also in on its assets as part of our regional work on the Move More Eat Well plan with colleagues in Cardiff and Vale um, University Health Board as part of reviewing um, the potential to include further reference to low carbon advertising. We'll look at the information contained in the draft motion Mr Curtis has shared um, as some of the information may not be um, applicable in a, in a Welsh context. The Council may not decide um, a motion is required if action is to be taken, rather a change to our advertising protocol and associated procurement documents. This work will be undertaken in the, in the coming months. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Question two from Mr Bowen is to the Cabinet Member for Education, Arts and the Welsh Language regarding Welsh language assistance for people arriving in Wales. Councillor Birch, please. Uh, Councillor Birch, you're on mute. Thank you. The Canolfan Iaith based at Ysgol Gwain and Ant has had a fantastic first year with five pupils having already successfully transferred to Welsh medium primary education after a term of Welsh language immersion. The centre is committed to working with all pupils regardless of the home language and has already supported the transition of one pupil who speaks Spanish as well as English at home into Welsh medium primary education. You may recently have seen media coverage of this pupil visiting the Senedd where she met with the Children's Commissioner for Wales, Rocio 
Kifuentes and the Minister for Education and the Welsh Language, Jeremy Miles. Another pupil who joined the Canal Van Yaith this term before transferring to a Welsh medium primary school in the summer originates from Nigeria and speaks English as a second language. Our admissions team raised awareness of the option of both Welsh and English medium education to all families arriving in the Vale from both inside and outside the UK, including our Ukrainian and Syrian guests, and families are advised that Welsh language immersion services are available. Thank you. Question three from Mr Curtis to the Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood and Building Services regarding traffic surveys near the Knapp Gardens. Councillor Wilson, please. Thank you very much for your question, Mr Curtis. And this is my reply. The council receives regular requests to provide crossings to facilitate safer access to bus stops and services, given increased traffic. Such requests are always considered in the context of safety of road users, and as a result, liaison with the police who recall personal injury collision cases. Personal collision cases records for the three years period up to 29th December 2021, which is the latest data supplied to us by Welsh Government, for the areas referred to Bonnyamore and Wombly Park Road indicate that, that during that period of time there has been no personal injury collisions at the aforementioned locations, which would suggest that a reasonable level of road safety pertains. With regards to parking, I would advise the majority of Bonamore and Lakeside Roads adjoin the Nap Gardens, as well as the area of the, of the junction Romney Park Road and Lakeside, front of the public tiles and access gate to Romney Park, is protected by parking restrictions, which assist in preventing a, inappropriate parking. The Council's parking enforcement team carry out scheduled patrols to ensure compliance with these parking restrictions as far as needs to be practical. Taking all of this into consideration, there is no evidence of the need for further safety interventions or control crossings at this time. Although I can confirm that we will always continue to monitor the situation and take any deemed appropriate action to deal with any safety issues that become apparent. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, question four from Mrs Glover to the Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Sustainable Places regarding the proposed increase in allotment rental. Uh, Councillor Brooks, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mrs Glover. I am very aware of the social value provided by allotments, and we have certainly not taken a decision to increase the current fees likely. As it stands, the council is subsidising the Barry Andrews allotments as the fees charged do not cover the cost of their upkeep. And the income from these allotments is around about £20,000, whereas the cost to provide and maintain them is around £34,000. Unfortunately, this position is unsustainable at this time. As we've already discussed, we have lengthy discussions this evening. The authority has made its stark financial position clear recently during discussions on the 2023-24 budget. And we are facing a financial shortfall of around £9 million. And in order to make the allotment self-sustaining, it is proposed to increase the purge fee from £6.50 to £11.20 per year. This is in line with the Council's allotments in Cowbridge, where fees are currently £14 per perch per year. And most allotments are made up of about 10 perches. So for Barry Andrews, this works out as an additional 90p per week per allotment. The council, however, though, has no wish to subject anyone to financial hardship. And allotment holders are able to request that their allotment size be reduced by 50% in which case our allotment fees would be less than that paid for 22-23. Alternatively, um, allotment holders could approach the council with a proposal to set up an allotment association. This would then involve taking over the management and maintenance of the site from the council, in which case no fees would be charged. All, asso all associated costs would be picked up by the association, as would the responsibility for lettings. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Question five from Mrs Glover to the Cabinet Member for Community Engagement, Equalities and Regulatory Services regarding demand for allotments. Councillor Sivignanen, please. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you, uh, Mrs Glover, for your further question on allotments. Um, from, 
let me say from the outset that we want all our allotment holders to continue to contribute to making the Vale of Gamorgan a greener place. Um, as, as Councillor Brooks has uh, outlined already, allotment holders at our Cowbridge site are certainly not being given preferential treatment in this regard. The allotment costs there at, that, at this location um, are not increasing as they're already higher than the price point required for a break-even uh, position at our allotments in Barry and Roos. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Question six from Mr Curtis to the Deputy Leader regarding allotment rent increases. Um, Councillor Brooks, please. OK, thank you, Mr Curtis, and thank you, uh, Mayor. The proposal to increase the current allotment fees in Barry and Roos is not aimed at plugging the Council's finances. The increases will permit the service to be self-funding, thereby better better guarantee in them as a re valuable resource for our future generations. It should be noted, as I referred to in a previous question, that most allotments are made up of 10 perches. So for Barry and Roos, the fee change works out as an additional 90 pence per week. We already have concessionary rates for residents who are 65 years of age and older, where the fee is reduced by 25%. And this concession, uh, I must emphasise, will continue. The council has no wish to subject anyone to financial hardship. Um, as I've previously uh, stated, allotment holders are able to request that their allotment size be reduced by 50%, in which case their allotment fees would be less than that paid for 22 to 23. We have allotments comprising of between three to 12 purchases currently, with the majority being 10 purchase, purchases. And as I already advised when responding to earlier question on the same topic, an alternative to paying an increased fee or amending their allotment plot area, allotment holders could approach the council with a proposal to set up allotment association. And as I've already stated, this would involve taking over the management and maintenance of the site from the council, in which case no fees would be charged. And then all associated costs would be picked up by the association, association as with the responsibility for lettings. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Question seven for Mrs Chivers to the Cabinet Member for Community Engagement regarding CCTV in Barry. Councillor Sivignanum, please. Sorry, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you for your question, uh, Mrs Chivers. Um, it, uh, unfortunately, I think the information that you've uh, that Mr Chiver seems to have been given by South Wales Police is not correct. Um, the CCTV cameras are on Broad Street and the High Street area have all been upgraded and are fully operational. The cameras are monitored uh, 24, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week by qualified and experienced CCTV operators um, who have a direct radio link with local police. Um, it is police practice to check all available CCTV, including retail, residential, um, dash cams, footage and so on. Um, if an incident takes place within range, uh, if, if, if an incident takes place within range, because this obviously will uh, uh, assist the police with their investigation, um, it is not an indication of any failure with the council's CCTV system. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, question eight from Mr Britton to the Executive Leader regarding public electric car charging capacity in Barry. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor, and um, thank you, Mr Britton. The, the Council is, is committed to exploring opportunities to reduce emissions uh, from, from, from transport, and the current the Council's current strategy is to work in conjunction with the Cardiff Capital Region um, on key electric vehicle charger installations. Our work initially focused on the provision of eight um, EV charging points for taxis in key locations be within Barry, um, and the Council is currently working on the installation of 18 public um, EV charging points located primarily within its off-street um, car parks throughout the Vale. This includes 10 um, locations in Barry and, and town centre areas um, and also in Barry Island Resort. A number of these installations are still uh, waiting to be programmed um, for electric connections before they go live. With regard to specific charges recently installed 
um, at the at the civic offices. These are currently intended for the council's electric vehicle fleet. However, um, we are looking at options um, and, and what the logistics are of allowing staff and the public to use the charge points in due course. We need to scope out the, the use for, for the, the fleet vehicles at the moment. Phase two of the rollout of, of EV charges at various local community centre sites um, throughout the Vale is, is planned and the Council is currently undertaking um, a consultation exercise on these locations. There are also a further 10 locations identified within Barry for such installations. However, these are, the are dependent on the outcome of the consultation process, um, that we need to make sure that there's a, the right level of supply, etc., and also that, that people want them in those locations. The council has previously um, completed a, a project funded by Welsh Government to assess on-street charging best practice and identify potential locations for the future um, in terms of on-street charging um, infrastructure. This project will help us shape availability and provision of safe and accessible EV charging capabilities throughout the Vale, and that's including Barry, especially in areas of terrace properties with no off-road parking. We, we recognise that as, as, as a, a real issue. The overall policy aim um, will be to ensure EV charging availability and equipment for residents that is generally convenient appropriate, equitable, accessible um, and robust for, for the Vale of Glamorgan residents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Question nine from Mrs Hay to the Executive Leader regarding traders and the Council working together. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mrs Hay. Um, traders meetings across the town in the Vale have regularly been attended um, by officers from the regeneration team of the council. And this gives a chance for two-way discussion and information share, uh, sharing. Um, the council is also planning on signing up to the Welsh Government Placemaking Charter, which has been mentioned in an earlier uh, response, which will see placemaking plans created for each of the four town centres in the Vale. Work on the placemaking plan for Barry has already started um, and, is planned, and it's planned to hold engagement events in the spring, which will feed into the plan's development. This engagement will, work, will involve both the community and local businesses. Finally, subject to funding being agreed, the council will support plans for events for each town and discussions will take place with town councils and trade bodies following the securing of, of funding to support this. And I think that I'd also like to add that I've currently got two invitations to meet with business people, which I will be fulfilling hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I know that, that both I and um, other members of the cabinet would be only too happy to meet um, business owners for, for cons consultations. Um, those, con those, those discussions normally take place with officers, but we are very happy to join those com com conversations um, should you wish. Thank you. Thank you. Question 10 from Mrs Hay to the Executive Leader regarding a regeneration plan for Holton Road. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, Mrs Hay, for your question. The Council has, over a number of years, um, sought to improve both the appearance and character of Holton Road through the installation of both hard and soft landscaping. Um, work's also been undertaken to develop opportunities for the greening of Holton Road, and this has involved meeting and liaising with businesses and traders. Looking forward, um, the placemaking plan that, that I uh, mentioned will highlight the town centre as a priority area and this would include Holton Road. Engagement and consultation concerning the development of the plan will take place in the coming months and I, I suppose I need to add on this is, is that when we are developing um, these placemaking plans we, we do recognise that we might be covering all town centres but all town centres are very different and those plans will need to reflect that difference as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question 11 for Mrs Hay to the Executive Leader regarding Holton Road improvements. Thank you, Councillor Burnett. Thank you, Mayor. 
And um, thank you, Mrs Hay. Um, Holm Road has seen investment in public realm and, and green infrastructure both before and during the pandemic. In addition, grant funding is available via the Transforming Town Fund to renovate empty and underused properties. And we have we've seen several examples of this in, in recent years. We're currently working with property owners on a number of schemes for the next financial year. A new market provider has become operating on has begun operating on King Square. And I, I know people have been there. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to yet. And on the back of this, it's hoped to attract other events to the square. Finally, the town centre that includes Holton Road is a priority area within, as I mentioned, the, prior, the emerging Barry placemaking plan. But it sadly must be noted that any proposed in, in improvements will obviously be subject to, um, to us being able to secure funding. Thank you. Uh, question 12 from Mr Wallace to the Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood and Building Services regarding flood map planning for uh, Apologies regarding flood map for planning at the East Keys development site. Councillor Wilson, please. Thank you, Mr. Wallace, for your question. And this is my reply. It is not the council's responsibility to advise NRW as Natural Resources Wales what levels they should be using for a flood map for planning. And this inquiry should be directed to NRW, who are the statutory body for commenting on flood risk. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Question 13 from Mr Clark to the Executive Leader regarding Woodham Road facility. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mr Clark. Um, the appellant's appeal submissions are supported by an environmental impact assessment following a screening direction issued by PEDU on the 13th of, of January 2022. This direction relates to the development as constructed um, and that, that subject to, to, of the um, enforcement appeal. There's a complex history to screening directions associated with previous planning applications, at which time Welsh Government screened the proposals um, as not being um, an EIA development. Whether the previous proposals were EIA development is not fundamental to the merits of the current development or the ongoing appeal. Thank you. Thank you. Um, question 14 from Mr Clark to the executive leader regarding um, what Mr Clark describes as the incinerator on Woodham Road. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor. And, um, Mr Clark, the Statement of Common Ground, or the SOCG, refers to the principle of a wood-fired renewable energy plant. Um, and the SOCG does not discuss whether the development has constructed or previous specific proposals are or were EIA development. An energy development may, depending on the very specific nature of it, the size input per day, for example, um, may not be um, an EIA um, development. Consequently, the SOCG does not infer any conclusion about whether the previous applications should have been accompanied um, by environmental impact assessments and any agreement about the broad principle of an industrial development of this kind in an industrial location is not considered to be dependent on whether EIA is or was required. The content of the SOCG does not prejudice the Council's position in respect of the development that has been built or prejudge whether the environmental impacts are accessible, uh, acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Question 15 from Mrs Ockerby to the Executive Leader regarding bollards on Kings Square. Councillor Burnett, please. There's an amazing Twitter feed called World Bollard Association that um, Councillor Wilson and I are addicted to. But um, following the damage due to vandalism of some of the existing bollards, uh, replacements have been ordered um, and they will be installed as soon as they're delivered. Once the new bollards are installed, they will only be lowered for market access and park staff. No other vehicular access to the square will be permitted. Thank you. 
And question 16 from Mrs Ockerby to the executive leader regarding the removal of graffiti. Councillor Burnett, please. I, I feel I'm not giving you pause for breath, so um, do tell have, me if I, I need to slow letter. down. We're, we're all right. Good. I'm, so, I'm sorry I'm monopolising things now for the, most of the meeting. Um, thank you, Mrs Ockerby. Um, the, the council will remove or cover up racist or otherwise offensive graffiti from any property within 24 hours. We're also prepared to remove other graffiti from private property with the agreement of the building owner, but only in specific circumstances. Protection of private property is essentially the responsibility of the private property owner, and it would not be appropriate to use council taxpayers' funds to undertake such work when the private property owner may have the necessary means to arrange this work for themselves. In the event that we do undertake such work, we would require the private property owner to provide us with an indemnity against any possible loss or damage. To request this service, a business should contact the council's call centre and an officer will liaise with that business directly and assess the graffiti and where possible, um, a removal service or suitable advice will be offered. Unfortunately, we simply don't have the, the resources to contact private property owners to proactively offer this service often in addition to officer time. This would mean paying a fee to the land registry to establish land ownership details in the, in the first place. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, can, question 18 from Mr Wallace to the executive leader regarding no, the trans... Sorry, Mayor, I think you've missed 17. I have, I have. Apologies. Question 17 from Mrs Ockerby to the executive leader regarding the cleaning regime for Holton Road. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mrs Ockerby. Um, the council provides a street cleaning service in accordance with Welsh Government's Code of Practice for litter and refuse. This sets out areas in predetermined zones that specify different levels of cleaning and response. Under this regime, the town centre is cleaned daily by council staff, supported by mechanical sweeping. I must be honest, I quite often walk down about quarter to eight in the morning after I caught my bus in and, and it's normally already done by, by then. Um, the areas around the leisure centre and civic offices are on a, are on a lesser frequency, but are que uh, cleaned weekly. In light of your comments, Mrs Ockerby, I have requested that the Council's cleaning department inspects all these areas to ensure that the current cleaning and enforcement arrangements are, are sufficient. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And now we're on to question 18 from Mr Wallace to the Executive Leader regarding the Transgender Inclusion Toolkit. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mr Wallace. Um, the Draft inclu Trans Inclusion Schools Toolkit is guidance and it's aimed at prof professionals working in our education settings in supporting young people and their families and does not seek to resolve matters relating to social transition. The draft toolkit is being widely consulted upon and the consultation ends on the 17th of March 2023. We welcome contributions um, during, the contribution, uh, during the consultation process. Thank you. Thank you. And the final question from members of the public, question 19 from Mrs Ockerby to the executive leader regarding the prevention of littering at Barry Island and other resorts. Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mrs Ockerby. Um, leading up to the bathing season, the Council intends to run a social media campaign highlighting the impacts of litter on our beaches and to encourage the use of litter bins, as well as improving local recycling facilities. Additionally, um, as there is positively more active um, voluntary litter picking groups, Hang on, I can't read this. I haven't written it properly. Additionally, um, there's there's more active voluntary litter picking groups contributing to beach and resort cleaning. Um, so the council aims to work with these more closely and have more engagement with visitors to prevent and minimise littering. Um, but I I will admit it's a, a huge challenge and it's a huge drain on resources, both financial and human. Um, also, the council's enforcement team has recently set up an active waste crime unit 
um, as part of its strategic approach to litter and fly tipping and intends to have a more regular officer presence at the beach and, and other resort locations this year. I hope that works as well. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Uh, so we move on to item 14. Any items which the Mayor has decided are urgent enter part one? I have none. Agenda item 15. Any items which the Mayor has decided are urgent enter part two? I have none. So it just remains for me to thank members for their attendance and contributions this evening. And uh, just to say, I hope you enjoy what's left of the evening. Thank you very much, everybody, and good night. Bye. Good night, all. Good night, all. Thank good you. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night.